now. We'll see you on ESPN. Less than an hour ago, Toledo found out it's ranked 24th in the new college football playoff rankings. But tonight, the Rockets, led by Philip Ely at quarterback, put their perfect season on the line against their nemesis in the MAC West, Northern Illinois. Rod Carey's Huskies have won five straight over the Rockets. It's the debut of Maction on ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Jimmy Johns, and it's next. But first, let's check in with Chris Connor in the studio. Thank you, Eamon, here in our college football studios alongside Trevor Maddich. Going to get you back out to the glass bowl here in a little bit. Love Maction on Tuesday night because it's usually something crazy happening, especially at the glass bowl over the years, so expect that to happen tonight. Toledo, as Eamon said, comes into the new college football ranking at 24. More importantly, as far as the playoff is concerned, the top four teams, Trevor, as we've seen earlier today, literally just about an hour ago, these were released on ESPN. What do you make of it? I like it. The thing I like best about this is that they have Alabama up there at number four, even though they have a loss. That means they look past the, just the win-loss record because there's a bunch of undefeated teams mm -hmm. that could have been in Alabama's place at number four. Now, Alabama's got some good wins over Wisconsin, who has a 7-2 and two record. Texas A&M, they're ranked number 19, 6-2 record. That's a good thing. But I think it shows that they're actually also watching the tape. Right. Because... I think Alabama is my number four team in the power ranking, even though they do have a loss. And watching the tape, I think, is something that's important for them to do. Well, I think, you know, and speaking to Heather Dinich, who's there reporting from uh, Grapevine today when the committee was meeting, it seems like the coaches, the former coaches that are on the, the committee, look more at the tape. The ADs are sort of in the middle, and the Condoleezza Rice types, they're looking at a, and Jeff Long, who's an AD also, but looking at a little more of the, the empirical data. So there's a good mix and I think this points it out, to your point, that it looks like a lot of different things are going into it. The problem you run into is if they worship at the altar of the almighty spreadsheet, then there's an issue. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the tape, you see other things. For example, they've got Ohio State in there, Michigan State not. Both teams undefeated. Michigan State has a road win over a ranked team, Michigan. Ohio State does not have a win over a ranked team right now. But they have Ohio State there, Michigan State not, because when you watch the tape, Ohio State is playing much, much better than Michigan State is right now, even though the resume for Michigan State is better. Right, and we don't even see Iowa on that list. There's, as you mentioned, 11 undefeated teams. Iowa comes in ninth in the top ten. What do you make of TCU and Baylor being left out of the four, and they're unbeaten kind of again like last year coming out of the Big 12? I think they're being punished for their strength of schedule. Yeah. Both of these teams have one win over a Power 5 team. They both beat Texas Tech. That's it because they haven't played anybody else that's got a winning record in the Power Five. Their non-conference schedule doesn't have that, mm -hmm. and their conference schedule is now backloaded. So they have, both of them, one of the most difficult final stretches in November and then December in the entire world of college football. But up until this point, their resume doesn't put them in a position where the committee could say they deserve to be there. We're going to learn a lot more about the Big 12 starting this week, TCU and Oklahoma State. We're going to learn a lot more about the SEC as well, Alabama and LSU. A lot to get to in November to sort this whole thing out. We'll do our best to do that. Until then, though, let's send it back to the Glass Bowl for Northern Illinois and Toledo. Guys? All right, Chris, thank you very much, and welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Jimmy Johns. Tonight, from the Glass Bowl in Toledo, it's a Mid-American Conference matchup between the undefeated Toledo Rockets and the 5-3 and three Northern Illinois Huskies. And it is warm and beautiful for football in Toledo. I'm Eamon McEnany, happy to be joined by the former Notre Dame linebacker, Rocky Boyman. Quint Kessick is patrolling the sidelines for us as we take a look at the standings in the mid American West. If you want to go to Detroit, you want to win this game here tonight. And Rocky, you see Toledo there, ranked 24th. But the Rockets know before they can worry about how much stock does their win over Arkansas have or will Temple lose again, they know they have to take care of business in their own backyard. Well, look, Northern Illinois has been their nemesis for a long time. It's important to realize the reason I think that Toledo hasn't found their way into the MAC championship in 11 seasons is because of Northern Illinois. I think this is, though, the best Toledo team to take into this matchup against their nemesis in a long time. The Rockets have put up more than 50 points in their last three games, but tonight they hope to have Kareem Hunt finally at 100%. Hey, man, I think Kareem Hunt's probably the best running back in the MAC conference. The problem is we have not seen it this year. He's been dealing with a hamstring injury that's been lingering. The word is this is the healthiest he's been coming into any game this season. Rocket fans are hoping to see that bruising, battering style of their running back. And the Husky fans are certainly expecting to see the same from Joe 
Joel Buonio. Long history of running the football here at Northern Illinois. Joel Buonio is the next man up. Four straight 100-yard games. Really runs well behind his pads and is exceptional in the red zone. Toledo won the toss. The Rockets deferred, so Northern Illinois will receive. The Rockets in the gold jerseys with the blue numbers and blue helmets. The Huskies, all white jerseys with the red numbers. Toledo, 36 and 8 in the match since 2010. Five of those eight losses to Northern Illinois. Tonight, they put a perfect record on the line, and we are underway from the glass bowl. This is Turner. Spins at the 20. And that is where he goes down. So that is where the Huskies and Drew Harrell start tonight's ball game. But for more on the recent history between these two programs, let's send it down to the field and check in with Quinn Kessinick. Kryptonite. Northern Illinois has been Toledo's kryptonite in the last five meetings. The common trait, fourth quarter critical playmaking by the Huskies, and Temple has gone home a loser. You talk to both coaches, Rod Carey of Northern Illinois says it's like fighting your brother. Says you know exactly when he's gonna punch, how he's gonna punch. The critical thing is who makes the last punch. Matt Campbell of Toledo says it's our time. We are ready to win this game. Look to their defense and their depth to crush the kryptonite. And as promised, it's Buonio right up the middle to start the game. Chase Murdoch. Out of Barrington, Illinois, who lives 40 miles away from DeKalb, says he's sick and tired of hearing about the losing streak to Rod Carey's Huskies, makes the tackle. Absolutely, and we talk about long history of running the football here in Northern Illinois. It's Joel Buonio's turn. Now the Jets sweep to Tommy Lee Lewis, and they have that rent. Jawan Woodland with the penetration and the tackle for a loss. So it's third and long now on the opening drive for the Huskies. And this is going to be key, stopping Tommy Lee Lewis. Eamon, yesterday we were at walkthrough. They had a red jersey on the scout team offensive player, sig basically signifying we need to know where number 10 is at all times. So now they go to the pistol in a throwing situation. Against Eastern Michigan in his last ball game, Drew Hare threw four touchdowns, zero picks. Here comes pressure. Over the middle, high throw to Galladay, makes the grab, and the first down. Ball comes loose at the end. Toledo ball. Wow. Trayvon Mathis with the recovery. And it was a beautiful play call by Northern Illinois. They caught Toledo in man-to-man -man coverage. They run the crossing route right over the, the middle. The fumble and it was a great catch team. by Kenny Galladay, but it looked like it was either Cheatham Norrells or Dewan Rogers it was that popped that ball up for a huge play, giving the ball back to Toledo. It was indeed Rogers. Let's see. Ball clearly out before the knee was down. So Toledo takes over now on the Husky 39. Five wide receivers, no backs for Ely. Quick release over the middle. Caught. That's to the tight end, Michael Roberts. who's dragged down at the 36. Five-yard pickup. And Philip Ely. A steady quarterback here for the Rockets. He really is. Look, his numbers are unspectacular, but he takes care of the football. He's a great game manager. He gets the ball to all those weapons. Now off the play fake, gets it to Cody Jones, who slips and drops it. Corey Jones. And Rod Carey was concerned about number four, but gets helped out by the inaccurate throw and the slip by Jones. So now it's third and five for the Rockets. One thing unique about this Toledo offense is they're one of two schools in the country that have not yet given up a sack. Part of that's their offensive line's playing well. Part of that is the fact that Ely gets that ball out of his hand quick. That's now 255 pass attempts without a sack. Miscommunication on the route. He was looking for Alonzo Russell. Russell went inside, the throw went outside, so now Coach Campbell. Jamison's vest long of the year is 44 against Arkansas State. This would be a 51-yarder from the 34. So they're going for it. Fourth and five from the 34, looking to cash in on the fumble recovery. Open, knocked away at the last minute. Field, Texas is incomplete for Denver, number 25, Cody Thompson. 
Jawan Lurie knocks the pass away. And Matt Campbell's club cannot take advantage of the early fumble. Scoreless in Toledo. Back to the glass bowl after. AT&T presents the strongest of the strong. Gentlemen, today's feat of strength, who has the strongest profile pick? That's me, climbing Kilimanjaro. Strong. That's me finishing my third triathlon. Very strong. That's me. I took it at the mall. Who's strong enough to watch the college football playoff with Bo? Get stronger with AT&T, the network with the nation's strong. New Year's Eve will be so awesome watching college football through confetti. Missing out is not an option, so plan accordingly. Welcome back to Toledo. Scoreless here with 13-10 to go in the first quarter. Rocky Shawan Lurie's been making plays all year long. Yeah, he leads, the, he leads the nation interceptions with seven and a critical pass breakup by Lurie here on fourth down. And it looked like he had a step on Lurie to the inside, but a great break on the football, reaching that right hand across, knocking it out. First and 10 now for the Husky, second possession. Here comes pressure right up the middle, force the thigh throw. Looking to get the ball to Tommy Lee Lewis. Number eight, Chaz Whitaker with the coverage. No gain, second and 10. Chaz Whitaker had the coverage. Now it's second and 10, back to the pistol, twins to the right. Juanyo looking for a crease. Gets out to the 38, brought down by Dewan Rogers. And this is what you see out of Northern Illinois' offense. They're gonna pepper the perimeter of the field, get that defense running, get their tongues dragging a little bit. Then it's gonna be Joel Buanyu right up the gut all night long. Coach Carey told us we're gonna hit him in the mouth, and then we're gonna hit him again. It's our best against their best. Pocket collapses on Hare. He's gonna run for it. He is right at the marker. Murdoch and Woodley converged on him. Looks like he's over. He's going to be inches short. And Drew here, look, he's not Jordan Lynch, the running quarterback that I think Husky fans wish was still around here. But he can pick up valuable yards with his legs. A great read by him, seeing the daylight and taking it. Now a fourth down. Fourth and one. Rolling out to the left. Gets the first down. And then steps out of bounds. Had Buano leading the way. Five yard pickup by Hare on the keeper. And that's what we'll see. These critical situations when this team needs a yard, Drew Harrell would put the ball in his hands. As you said, Amy, he got a great lead block from Buano on the cornerback. Got a few extra yards out of it. Three wide receivers now. Back to Buano, who cannot escape. No gain. Orion Jones with the tackle. And Toledo's defense has two big fellows in the middle that have been playing in this matchup for a long time. Orion Jones, 97. Trayvon Hester, a couple 300-pounders. Rod Carey told us, we feel like we've been dealing with those two guys for a long time. They're very familiar with their counterparts, Aiden Conlon and Andrew Ness. Here comes pressure. Deep ball. Knocked away. Looking for Galladay, but it was Trayvon Mathis with the coverage. And Eamon, this is the difference in Northern Illinois' offense from this year to last year. Last year, again, lots of, a lot of perimeter passes and lots of runs. This year, they have the vertical threat and Kenny Galladay down the sideline. They're going to try to take that shot all night long, but a great breakup by Trayvon Mathis. Chicago native wanted to return closer to home after starting his collegiate career at North Dakota. Now third and ten. Hair with time too high. Looking for Desroy Maxwell, the tight end. But now on fourth and ten, Coach Carey will throw out the punting team. Fourth 
preventing Jim Ambrose at the puck to the Huskies. Ambrose on to punch. Corey Jones back to receive. Low and out of bounds. Not a very good kick. Let's see where they mark it. At the 25. So the Rockets get it back. As we remain scoreless. And a reminder this week, college game day built by the Home Depot heads back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama for the huge matchup between undefeated LSU and the 7 1 Crimson Tide. Reese, Kirk, Dez, Lee Corso, and the rest of the crew prep you for another full day of football like only they can do. It all starts Saturday at 9 Eastern on ESPN, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. And if you're just tuning in, the college football playoff rankings made their debut for 2015. It's a short game by Kareem Hunt, and of course, LSU and Alabama very interested. LSU comes in at two. Alabama with that one loss comes in at four. Clemson with the win at Notre Dame, the win over Notre Dame, excuse me, at home, comes in at number one. Hunt gets it for a second straight time, brought down by Boomer Mays. That's a first down for the Rockets. And I like it. I think you, you get Kareem Hunt into this game early, get him hit, get him warmed up, get him in the flow. And now we see a new formation as the tight end, Michael Roberts, in the slot. Offense coordinator Jason Candle told us they want to move him around because they think he can present matchup problems for the Huskies. Yeah, with as much man-to-man -man coverage as Northern Illinois plays, they feel like they can get a good matchup with their six foot four, 265-pound tight end. But they keep it on the ground, and that play is broken up. Perez Ford with the penetration. Rocky, who are your impact players when the Rockets have the ball? Well, for the Rockets, it's none other than Cream Hunt, a guy who, as we talked about, his impact on this game, finally back feeling healthy. But then for Northern Illinois, they got two great cornerbacks, Paris Logan and Shawan Lurie, who we saw early do a great job in man coverage for the Huskies. Now off the play fake, here comes pressure. Ely forced to throw it away. So he sensed. Cameron Clinton Earl coming in untouched and Bobby Jones the fourth as well So he threw that one into the first row and that's one thing Rod Carey and Jay Neiman the defensive coordinator talked about look We got to get Phil Philip Ely off of his spot He does such a good job of getting rid of the ball quickly, but nevertheless got to bring some pressure He's not a threat to run so you don't have to worry about him creating a you know finding a rush lane Get him off his spot and force some errant throws Ely starting off cold just one for five now they empty the backfield Over the middle, caught by Russell for a first down into Husky territory. Mays and Moore bring him down, but the senior is now caught a pass in 46 straight games. What a beautiful read by Ely right there. Northern Illinois goes to two deep, and Alonzo Russell cuts it right in the middle of the field where the defenders are not there. Makes a big time catch. He holds the second longest streak among active players. D.J. Foster at Arizona State has put a pass in 47 straight. Now a late flag on that incompletion. They were looking for Roberts. This flag nowhere near the play, though. Looks like it's going to go against Marlon Moore or Albert Smalls. Our official tonight. After the play, unsportsmanlike, defense number one. 15-yard penalty, first down. That's number one. First on Sportsman Like Paul. And it is indeed Albert Smalls, the sophomore out of Miramar, Florida. Not too much after the game, after the play, and Rod Carey obviously not happy at all about the lack of discipline. Well, and he's telling him, look, you know, I know this is a rivalry match, and these two teams don't like each other, but you've got to control yourself. Think at the top of your screen there, or excuse me, the bottom of your screen. And look, I mean, as you well know, it's always the second guy, the guy who throws a second punch that gets the penalty. Well, it also didn't help to hit the helmet. Cody Thompson chirping there, and now there's movement on the line by the Rockets. False start offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty, first down. That call goes against Storm Norton, the junior from right here in Toledo. The only offensive lineman who had started a game in his career before this season. Three career starts. They have not skipped a beat up front for the Rockets. Now first and 15 from the 35. A bit of an alley here for Terry Swanson. 
13-yard pickup. He picked up a great block by his right tackle, Elijah Nkansa. But Terry Swanson, he's been the guy that stepped up in, since Kareem Hunt's been dealing with that hamstring. A great zone runner is Terry Swanson we saw in that play. 118 yards and a touchdown in the last game against UMass. Now they move the pocket to the right. That's complete along the sideline. Keyshawn Wiltshire makes the grab for a first down. And just another quick pass. You see how quick Ely gets that ball out of his hand. It's so hard for the defense to get any sort of pressure on him. He finds Wiltshire on the sideline. Here's Swanson. Cuts it up inside, breaks a tackle at the five. He will score. Flag on the play. He broke the tackle, but there might be a hold on the perimeter by a wide receiver. Holding offense number nine. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So it is indeed on the wide receiver, the veteran Alonzo Russell. Yeah, Alon Alonzo Russell to the bottom of your screen. Tries to make a block, but as the defensive back is trying to get away, those hands get a little bit outside the framework. Tough call. It's Paris Logan he was blocking. So the touchdown comes off the board. See Cody Thompson, the third receiver in. He's been Ely's go-to guy here of late. Hunt picks up the blitz. Ely forced out of the pocket. And he gets out of bounds. Let's see where they spot him. Only to see if that's the first sack given up. And it looks like it is indeed a tackle for a loss. Bobby Jones, the fourth. Brings him down. second down at 11. Oh, so first sack allowed this year by the Rockets. More importantly, it makes it second and 11 as they're moving backwards. Four wide receivers, Hunt back in the backfield. Quickly out to Jones. Gets brought down by Logan and Jones. Pick up the six, so that'll make it third and five, Rocky, here for Coach Campbell and the Rockets. Well, here we see the tight end, Michael Roberts, come in. He's at the wingback spot. I think if they see man coverage by Northern Illinois, they're going to try to find their big body tight end, number 80. It looks like Coach Campbell's going to take a timeout and talk things over. First charge timeout, Toledo. So the Rockets knocking on the door when we return to the Glass Bowl. So I was a head chef at 24. I won Best New Restaurant in the Country at 31. I've published cookbooks, I've been on TV. I've relied on people every step of the way. I still do, I have to. So staying connected to those people, that's what makes me feel accomplished. They're people I connect with, that I'd sit at a table with. These are the people that I ride with every day. Well, this is a first. AT&T and DirecTV are now one. So get ready to laugh here and cry here. Scream over here and freak out over there. And maybe go back to laughing here and crying there. Try not to laugh here, though. It's rude. And maybe don't cry here. People will get the wrong idea. Introducing the all-in-one plan, only from DirecTV and AT&T. Excellent. Looking below the surface, researching a hunch, and making a decision. You are type E. Time for a change of menu. Research and invest from any website with E-Trade's browser trading. E-Trade. Opportunity is everywhere.
ESPN College Football is presented by Jimmy John's Freaky Fast Sandwiches. Back here in Toledo, the Rockets facing a third and five from the Northern Illinois 11. Scoreless here still in the first quarter. Kareem Hunt in the backfield. And there they move Roberts around there, Rocky. Yeah, down the bottom of your screen, this area of the field has usually been either Roberts, the tight end, or 25, Cody Thompson. Cody Thompson. Now Thompson in motion. Ely into the end zone. Touchdown, Russell. A perfect throw. And the Rockets are on the board first. I mean, I love what Toledo is doing right now. Finding Northern Illinois in man-to-man -man coverage. So you're, what do you do? You run crossing routes. Try to rub a defender off. Try to get him mixed up in the trash a little bit. And Alonzo Russell is a guy that comes free in the back of the end zone. Perfect pass by Ely. He now has 23 career touchdown catches. The senior out of Washington, D.C. That brings on Jamison Vest for the extra point. And it's good. Alonzo Russell, this is his 46th straight game with a reception in a huge one here as the Rockets go up by seven in this grudge match versus Northern Illinois. Bears, Chargers at 810 Eastern, Monday on ESPN. Ended down sharply today despite getting off to a strong start early in the morning. Asian markets all ended the day with modest gains, with markets in China spiking 2.8%. The energy sector experienced a day of sharp drops as low oil prices took their toll on the commodity sensitive sector. The energy sector is now down. How's it? Neil Everett here along with Stan the Man, or dare I say, the Stanimal. Don't ever call me. We've got a small business, and we needed a new website. I talked to a web design company, but they wanted to charge me a fortune. Then I heard about web.com. They said they would build me a custom website for free. We just thought, there's no way. Then I called them up. And then they built it for me. A custom website built free. Who would have thought? If you call the experts at web.com now, we'll build you a new custom website absolutely free. Then we'll list your website in hundreds of places online so new customers can easily find you. If you're happy with your new website, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. And when they say nothing, they really mean nothing. Call right now and get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. You say it, we build it free. It's as easy as web.com. Call 1-800-279-0568 today. ESPN, home of the college football playoffs. The college football playoff rankings made their debut earlier tonight. Toledo coming in at the 24th spot after the undefeated start and the big win at Arkansas, followed up by the win at home over Iowa State. And Rocky Phillip Healy got a hot hand on that drive to put him up 7 0. He really did, Amy. He started off the game one for five for just five yards. Since then, four for five for 42 yards on that touchdown drive. Now, Vucilich on the kickoff. This is Argeros Turner. Gets across the 30, spins out of one tackle out to about the 32. So a strong return by Turner. And a reminder, we have another huge college football Saturday ahead of us this weekend, which means it's time for Watch ESPN. Stream every game live. Download the app or go to watchespn.com. And Rocky, you're not allowed, though, to watch Notre Dame Pitt <laughs> while you're in Tulsa on Saturday. I'm sorry. You're going to have to go old school and wait till you get on the, get in the car on the way to the airport. I was watching Notre Dame Temple on my iPhone trick-or-treating trick last week. <laughs> Now Lewis on the smoke route gets knocked out of bounds 
by Chaz Whitaker. Tommy Lee Lewis, fifth year senior. He was on that Orange Bowl team of 2012. Hurt most of last year. He's also been dealing with an ankle injury this year, which has kind of been the, the reason his numbers have been down, but he's still such a weapon. Number 10 for Northern Illinois. Rod right, Carey telling us last night, what does he mean to our offense? Everything. We have to get the ball in his hands. Now Jordan Huff in the backfield as Buonio gets a break. Here with time down the middle, wide open. On cue. He can walk into the end zone. Tommy Lee Lewis, 67 yards. We have to get the ball in his hands. And as we just saw, I mean, it's not just on those bubble routes, not just on those one-step passes. Tommy Lee Lewis has the speed to beat you deep. And what a beautiful throw by Drew Hare on that play. The deep ball was something he just could not qu quite throw very well last year. This year, such a different story, hitting Tommy Lee Lewis in stride for the touchdown. Tommy Lee Lewis continues to haunt Toledo. Hagan on for the extra point. And it's good. Back in 2011, he returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown 100 yards. Later in the game, Toledo tied it up. And Tommy Lee Lewis returned to kickoff 95 yards. Here tonight, the Rockets feeling good about things with the early lead. Tommy Lee Lewis, one move and go. 67 yards, just like that, we are tied. Away. Away is the smell of victory and the smell of burgers. Away is always having home field advantage. Even when you're miles away from home, find your away. For a dealer in the RV that's right for you, visit GoRVing.com. I know. Yeah. Hi, I'm looking for the shower. There are no showers here, ma'am. We have a hot towel, but you have showers. Emirates Plains have showers and bars. Uh, this isn't an Emirates Plain, ma'am. There's no shower <laughs> and no bar. Oh, it was such a nightmare. Nothing like this. I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. Do you think we could fly this around a bit longer? Just like an hour. Welcome back to an all of a sudden quiet glass bowl. As you see there, the recent history has been all Northern Illinois and Tommy Lee Lewis with the 67 yard touchdown reception. So last Tied time I beat NIU, I was in eighth grade. There's not a player on this Toledo football team that has experienced getting a win versus Northern Illinois. Five straight wins over Toledo. The Rockets are 36 and eight in the MAC since 2010. Five of those eight losses to Northern Illinois. Johnson and Wiltshire back to receive for the Rockets. This will be Wiltshire from the one. Gets out to the 15 and then he is swarmed by the Huskies and driven back. There's, most people call it running back by committee, but Terry Swanson calls the trio the Justice League here in Toledo. <laughs> That's right. They got really four good ones right now going for the Toledo Rockets. We talked about Kareem Hunt, Damian Jones Moore. is a smaller back, but really good around the goal line. We've also seen Terry Swanson. Really good zone runner. Mark Remy's that guy is really good at catching the ball out of the backfield, but all four of those guys get it done here for Toledo. They start this drive with Swanson. Bit of a hold up here as Coach Campbell was having a conversation with the officials, but now it looks like we're ready to go. Now Northern Illinois is going to get an explanation. And now we're ready to play. Setting up the screen. 
They get it to Swanson, sets up his block, gets across the 20. So a very patient play on a couple ends there for Toledo. As Storm Norton got out on the edge to lead the way for Swanson. You're going to look, a lot of man coverage again by Northern Illinois. You see Toledo spreading the field out, hitting that perimeter. For some point, they're going to go back and pound that ball to the middle with Pick Cream Hunt. Up, take up the floor, now they go to the pistol. Back to Swanson. Bounces off one tackler, spins out for the first down. Gets a block into Northern Illinois territory at the 40, the 30. Spins his way all the way down to the 20. 58 yards for Swanson, and the Rockets are in business again. Wayman, what did their offensive coordinator, Jason Candle, tell us? They love the fact that Terry Swanson can just flat run away from people. A beautiful spin move. Then he gets on the perimeter and just walks about three or four defenders for the Huskies. Now Hunt right up the middle, running hard. Gets a first down. There's our Justice League game. And you get the running back Swanson on the perimeter, then pound it up the middle with Hunt. Looks like Brandon Mays, the strong safety down hurt. Out of Aurora, Illinois. 11 yard pickup. Jason Candle thought he thought he saw Kareem Hunt get to 100% this week in practice. He does. He said, we know when Kareem Hunt is at his best when he starts running behind those pads and running north-south. And that sure looked to be the case on that one. May he's able to get up. Hopefully he'll be back in the ball game for the Huskies. Now it's first and goal from the nine for the Rockets. They stick with Hunt in the backfield. Twins to the right. And it's Hunt up the middle. Gets just shy of the five, brought down by Corey Thomas. Same thing with Northern Illinois. They got some big bodies at those defensive tackles. Corey Thomas, 306 pounds. Mario Jones is close to 300 himself. But look, they're not going to change their game plan. They think they can move some bodies off the line of scrimmage and pound Kareem Hunt and the rest of those running backs. And Hunt goes right in for the score. So the Rockets answer, it's Hunt's fourth touchdown of the season. I mean, Northern Illinois, what they do well for a long time is play defense, but you get the sense that Toledo is not scared of their defensive front. They're going to go mano a mano right into the chops of those big boys and try to pound that rock, and Cream Hunt gets in the end zone. Best on for the kick. The point is good and Rocky in the summer in the preseason there was so much conversation about how Toledo was going to replace five starters on the offensive line. The question mark has become a strength for this ball club. What really has they played so well from the beginning of this season a little wham play there with a the tight end Zamolik with a nice block. But then look it's just surges by that offensive line pushing guys off the line scrimmage nothing fancy about it. And if you're a Rocket fan you got to love this old school look here by Toledo. The offensive coordinator, Jason Candle, telling us yesterday that the offensive line coach, Tom Manning, both Mountain Union products, did a great job of getting this team, getting the offensive line ready, and it started last year at the bowl practices. It really did. It got really an, extent, uh, an extra spring practice. Their bowl game was January 4th, so they really got about three weeks there to get that offensive line, knowing next year they were going to graduate, the guys from last year. Got that offensive line working, got the reps they needed, and really flowed right into this season. They also played the lack of, respect, lack of respect, chip on the shoulder card, and that worked as well, too. And now the kick goes into the end zone for a touchback as Turner takes a knee. 
Let's go down to the field and check in with Quinn. Eamon, if this becomes a scoring duel, it'd be interesting to watch Northern Illinois quarterback Drew Hare. The last touchdown pass showcased his improvability on deep balls. He spent all spring and summer working with offensive coordinator Bob Cole on deep balls, on throwing on the run, and also not drifting in the pocket. He had a habit last year of drifting to his left before releasing the ball. Hare, the son of a coach, extremely He's going to have to be on point tonight to keep up. All right. Another jet sweep to Tommy Lee Lewis, and he's losing yards, going backwards. Roland Milligan set the edge, and he's a guy who's changed everything for this defense. But again, you go back to Hare and Quint's conversation, he's already delivered one big play. Well, Quint's absolutely right. Last year, that's what Hare did. He drifted in the pocket, didn't really set his feet, but here, stands tall, gets up back foot involved, and is able to deliver a great throw down the middle. A lot of times those quarterbacks, they get happy feet, they want to move around too much. When they can set those feet and uncork it, a guy like Hare is really good. They get it in the hands of Lewis again. A stutter step for a few extra yards. Christian Dukes brings him out of bounds. Pick up a five. So now it's third and long for Hare and the Huskies. When we talked about the difference between this offense from this year to last year is that vertical threat in Kenny Galladay. And now we see here's Galladay in the slot to the bottom of your screen. They had too many men on the field. The tight end Wyman didn't get off in time, it looks like. 6'4", 254, it's kind of hard to sneak <laughs> off the hide. field. <laughs> Illegal substitution, offense, number 35. Five-yard penalty, third down. Much to the chagrin of his head coach, so now they got to look into the playbook for third and 15. Trips to the right, one receiver to the left. Hare over the middle. Complete first down. Galladay loses it. Incomplete. Jarred loose by Dewan Rogers, who's already forced a fumble. Now he comes up with a hit on Galladay. Well, as we talked about, they're putting Kenny Galladay tonight in the slot, trying to get a better matchup. But what a great breakup by Dewan Rogers. Rogers missed the last two games with an ankle injury, and boy, are they sure glad to have him back. Want to be a wide receiver and go over the middle, kid? <laughs> That's right. You got to deal with a guy like number 23, my man Dewan Rogers. Flag on the play. So before the punt. Ball start, offense number 29. Five yard penalty, fourth down. So now they'll snap from the 15 and kick from the goal line. Look, and Corey Jones is a guy they do not want to kick the ball to. I look for them to directional kick, try to keep it out of number four's hands. Another low kick to the sideline. Late fair catch signal made by Jones right at the 49. So a 36-yard punt, no return, but good field position for the Rockets already up by a touchdown. So, so much on the line here for Toledo. It starts in the MAC, but of course, group of five and getting into a New Year Six Bowl. You see Memphis with that undefeated record and the win over Ole Miss. Houston undefeated as well out of the American and Toledo 7-0 with those back-to-back -back wins over power fives at Arkansas and then here in overtime against Iowa State. Well, what an impressive year all three of those teams have had. Memphis, you look down their, their schedule though, they still got to play Navy, Houston, and Temple. In, oh, did he, was he able to pick that up out of the air? Yes, they say a catch for Jones. Sliding down to the ground, it popped up, and he got his hands on it. Great concentration by Corey Jones. That ball popped in the air. He didn't give up on it. And they cannot go quickly enough before Rick Jackson can buzz down and say, let's take a look. 
Yeah, it looks like that thing the made it to ground. The previous play is a completed pass. The play is under further review. So Rick Jackson is our replay official. Our communicator is Steve Barnes. Take a look at it as Ely shoots it out to the outside. Hard to tell from that angle if that ball hit the ground or not. Jeremy certainly did a good job of pulling it out of the Here's air. This angle. is the angle, yeah. Slow it down and get a better look. Yeah, that, that ball looked to me like it hit the ground. You don't think that right hand's under it the whole time? No, I, I think that was the case. Look, obviously the ball can hit the ground, but it can't aid in the catch. I think the ball, there was too much ball that hit the ground. So you've seen enough visual up. evidence to overturn that? If I'm the referee, I'm overturning that. Okay, yeah. that's right. Hmm? That's what I was asking you. <laughs> if you're Steve Barnes, you're saying Rick Jackson, you're saying incomplete pass. Yeah, I, you know, I think his hand was underneath it, but, but the ball hit the ground. Okay, before it was secured to me. Just to make it interesting, I'm going to disagree. I think that okay. right hand's yeah. underneath it the whole time, and I also don't think you have enough visual evidence to overturn the call on the field, but my track record isn't exactly a thousand percent this. It stands, it's a pickup of five. If it's Corey Jones, of course, he had that big game versus UMass a couple weeks ago. Eight receptions for 88 yards. After a review, it was determined that the ball touched the ground, therefore it's an incomplete pass. The ball will be placed at the 50-yard line, second down and 10. Rocky please set the game clock, 445, please, 445. And it'll start on the snap. Rocky one, Eamon zero. Visual evidence is in the <laughs> eye of the beholder. <laughs> It's so hard to determine what is, is and is not a catch anymore in football. So it's second and ten second from and midfield. Ten from Hunt in the backfield, twins to the left. Husky showing pressure off the edge. And it's a handoff to Hunt. Finds a bit of an alley out across the 45. Seven-yard pickup sets up third and manageable. Corey Thomas with the tackle. And look, Northern Illinois has eight guys in the box in that play, and Toledo has no, no desire to check out of that play. Now Hunt with a huge hole gets inside the 30, so another Toledo first down. And I really like the way Toledo is using tempo here. Get a nice run up the middle, get the line back on the line of scrimmage, and before the Huskies can know what hit them, boom, here comes Kareem Hunt again right up the middle. Love using that tempo here in the interior run game. 133 yards on the ground for the Huskies already. Northern Illinois just 12. Now Damian Jones-Moore is bottled up. Boomer Mays with the penetration to slow him down. Corey Thomas in on the play as well. We have a hurt Husky. So like it's Bobby Jones, the fourth. Yeah, that's Bobby Jones. That's a critical injury for Northern Illinois. He was the MAC Defensive Player of the Week a couple weeks ago versus Miami. Very active linebacker for the Huskies. He had 13 tackles in that ball game. His first career start, quickly up to his feet. So as we mentioned. Northern Illinois is not used to seeing that on the stat sheet. With North three, six left to go in the third. Northern third Illinois quarter. is used to seeing right. that number exactly. flip. Exactly. They, they pound the run. Rod Carey said, we're not changing who we are. We're going to pound the run. But right now, tonight, it's Toledo. That's really just saying, look, we're lining up here. We're running the ball here. Try and stop us. And so far, as you see, 134 rush yards for Toledo. Jason Candle telling us yesterday, that's been the difference. They had not blocked them well in the recent pass. He thought they could be more physical tonight. Now they empty the backfield on second and nine. Ely knocked up into the air and incomplete. Cameron Clinton Earl. Getting his paw on it. And look, when we talked about Toledo, they haven't given up a sack this year. A lot of that is due to the fact that Philip Ely gets the ball out of his hands. So how do you counteract that if you're a defense? you got to get your hands up. You're probably not going to get to Ely because he gets the ball so quick. So what do you do? You rush and you get a mid up. That's one thing I know Jay Neiman, their defensive coordinator, was talking all week. Third and nine. They stack the receivers to both sides. Damian Jones more in the backfield. Snap off the mark. They hand it off to Damian Jones-Moore. 
who is short. Number 24, Damian Jones, more of a bubble carrier. Mark them down at the 22, so they're going to send out Vest for the field goal. It's a five yard five gain. Vest long this year is 44. Has had one block so far in the season. It's three of four on kicks from 40 to 49, and this will be a 40 yarder. Actually, make it a 39 yarder. Nick Ellis, the holder. And it's good. So the Rocket, Rockets tack on three. So again, it is the running game gaining control. And it's Swanson and Hunt. Yeah, both these guys are having terrific games. And it's these runs, and it's right up the middle. Hat on the hat, moving guys off the line of scrimmage. And Swanson, especially with a big run to the outside. Swanson's a guy, again, as we talked about, can get to the perimeter, and then it's Kareem Hunt right up the middle. Boy, he sure looks to be healthy here tonight, doesn't he? Already in his career, the junior out of Willoughby, Ohio, has 10 career 100-yard games. You look at Swanson's average, that big 58-yard run is going to help that, but coming in, he had averaged 98 yards per game, which was third in the MAC. So now Northern Illinois on its heels here early on the road. Brown and Turner back to receive. This is Turner from the one. He has an alley. Gets by the kicker at the 40. The 50 into Rocket territory, knocked out of bounds. By Danzel Lewis McKinley. But a solid return by Turner. 58 yards. Look, when your offense is maybe struggling a little bit last series, what do you need? A big time play from your kick team. Great field position set up now for Drew Hare in this offense as they look to get back in sync. Off in the backfield, four wide receivers. Bad snap, gets by Hare. Still loose. And a Huskies huff falling on it for the Huskies, but a huge loss. They get the great field position, and then they puff it up just like that. That's something you don't often see from the fifth-year senior, Andrew Ness. The ball just clearly goes high over the head of Drew Hare. Almost around, they were very lucky a Husky was able to jump on that football, Amen. Ness making his 51st career start. It's a loss of 32. Now they get it to Breskison for the short game. Juwan Breskin, he, he's been a guy that last season he was the go-to guy. Now with Kenny Galladay emerging on the scene, have been a little bit more quiet from Breskison. He did have the touchdown in the red zone last week. Third and 39. Hare steps up, lets it fly. Has a man open. It's Lewis again. Are you kidding me? He gets open on third and 39. Late flag. And we talk about it, and Toledo has nightmares of number 10, Tommy Lee Lewis, and he's doing it again tonight. This flag certainly would appear to be after the play. Sideline warning, Toledo. So just a warning. I guess when you have Tommy Lee Lewis running a pass route, third and 39 is in play. Well, absolutely. And this time, it was, again, it was another double move by Tommy Lee Lewis. This time, he gets the nickel back. Connery Swift to bite. And then it's just a speed down the middle. No safety help second deep charge, there. Second timeout, Toledo. Third, second timeout. So it's a 50-yard gain all the way down to the Toledo 20. And now the Rockets want to talk things over and regroup. They better talk about how if Tommy Lee Lewis is in the slot and he does that skinny post route, 
they better at least they either have a safety in the middle to help or get someone on that can cover number 10. Again, it was the same as same look as the deep pass to Tommy Lee Lewis earlier. He's in the slot. Gives a little nod there. You see it right coming out of your screen there. He gets Connery Swift twisted around. The play earlier, Eamon, it was Chaz Whitaker, but the same thing, or just a little, little nudge to the outside by Tommy Lee Lewis. Spins the defender around, then the speed down the middle. Now here on the design run. Cannot get away from number 32. Josh Teach, Teachy, the freshman out of Maryland. Tommy Lee Lewis touchdowns in his last three games now and already 122 yards on four grabs. There's Kenny Galladay again in the slot, top of your screen. They've been liking that matchup. Lewis in the slot to the left, which is where Hare's looking now. Lewis makes the grab, but they're ready to drop him right away is Norrills. Cheatham. Norrills, who missed all of last year with a viral infection. Very scary for the young man. No one really was sure what the infection was. Missed the whole season, but he's 100% healthy now and back. Tommy Lee Lewis is going to take a rest, but right now he's the hot receiver, and Drew Harris is trying to get him the ball any way he can. Now Galladay, bottom of your screen to the left, matched up on Norrills. Here, though, looking right. Now forced out of the pocket. Into the end zone. Breskison went up high for it, but good coverage by Christian Dukes. So the Huskies send out the field goal kicking team. Christian Hagen, a sophomore out of Omaha, Nebraska. Perfect this year on kicks between 30 and 39 yards. This will be a 36 yarder. And it's good. So the Huskies are able to come away with points after the disastrous snap, thanks to Tommy Lee Lewis and the big pass play. And Eamon, look, remember we talked about the beginning of the game. Yesterday, a walkthrough, they had a red jersey on a scout team player signifying Tommy Lee Lewis because they knew NIU is going to try to get the ball to number 10 any way they can, line him up in the slot, line him out wide. But it's the shots down the middle tonight where Tommy Lee Lewis has really come up big. So many times this year, it's been Galladay and Breskison for the big plays, but tonight, number 10, who's so used to having big games against Toledo, is really feeling it again here tonight. Fifth year number senior. Battled injuries. And for more on number 10, let's send it down to Quinn. Well, Tommy Lee Lewis only got to play in two games last year. He was injured. They got the red shirt. And earlier this year against UNLV, he actually rolled his ankle. So he's just kind of getting back to full speed. What's interesting tonight, he's known as a jitterbug, an in-space guy, a, a deep threat all of a sudden. This is Dante Johnson. Jumps over his own man, gets out across the 20. And now with 33 seconds left in the quarter, he leaves. And the Toledo offense back on the field with a touchdown lead after the 21-yard return. I think if you're a Northern Illinois fan, you're saying, look, where, where's that stout defense we've seen around here for so many years? Right now, Toledo's offensive line, that first-year starting offensive line, really having their way with their guys up front. And go back to Swanson to start the drive. He gets it here and he breaks through. Nice play by Mays to come up and stop him right at the marker because it looked like he had a convoy going, but Mays broke through for the tackle, but a nine yard run on first down. They don't need to run a play, but they are a tempo team, so they're right up at the line ready to go. Back to Swanson. Again, finding a way to get through breaks a tackle and then loses his footing at the 44 but a 12-yard pickup on the last play of the first quarter the Rockets looking to remain undefeated and looking to slay the dragon from the cow the running game in fine form we're back in the second quarter after this this is the 
Quicksilver card from Capital One. It has no cashback limits, no changing categories, no nonsense. Because this is the hard-hitting, always hustling, leave it all on the field cashback card. Quicksilver earns you unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase, everywhere. Now that is music to my ears. What's in your wallet? Every insurance policy has a number. But not every insurance company understands the life behind it. For those who've served and the families who've supported them, we offer our best service in return. USAA, we know what it means to serve. Get an insurance quote and see why 92% of our members plan to stay for life. AT&T presents the strongest of the strong. Gentlemen, today's feat of strength, who has the strongest profile pick? That's me, climbing Kilimanjaro. Strong. That's me finishing my third triathlon. Very strong. That's me. I took it at the mall. Who's strong enough to watch the college football playoff with Bo? Get stronger with AT&T, the network with the nation's strongest 4G LTE signal. You see that? That's the Bernie, a real wood portable self-contained fire you can carry around in your backpack. With Bernie, it only takes one match to start grilling your favorite foods over real wood with no chemicals. That's a fire you can sing around. That's a fire you can cook a gourmet meal around. Skewer up hot dogs, kebabs, or a burger, and when the party's over, Bernie just burns away naturally. You can even put on a metal-plated Viking helmet and a beard so ridiculous and matted that you can find last night's mutton in it. Order your Bernie at BernieGrill.com. When you make it, when you reach the top, join an exclusive country club, acquire exotic automobiles, fill a garage, engage in investment banking, be a venture capitalist. Then when it's all said and done, head to a steakhouse, your steakhouse. It's anything but traditional. A double portion of juicy marinated steak loaded with toppings and grilled to go. The new Boss Wraps, only at Taco Bell. Knicks Cavs at 8, Clippers Warriors at 10.30, tomorrow on ESPN. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Jimmy Johns. We are in the Glass Bowl in Toledo, Ohio, getting ready for the second quarter. The Rockets with a 17-10 lead over Northern Illinois. And after the first quarter, the stats dominated by Toledo, except two huge big plays to Tommy Lee Lewis. And that's, again, something Northern Illinois fans are not used to seeing. Negative 22 yards rushing. It's been Toledo and that offensive line that's been the story of night. Quick release out to Jones. Gets a block on the edge by Zmolik. Brought down hard by Sean Foyer. Of course, the negative 22, you got to take into account the 32-yard loss on the high snap. But certainly they are winning the line battle at the line of scrimmage and they get nine more yards on that pass play. I love that last play. They've been hitting them up the middle hard. Now go back to attacking the perimeter. Widen that defense out a little bit. And they go right back up the middle with Hunt. Three yard pickup brought down by Juwan Johnson. And I'll tell you what I'm seeing. I'm seeing Toledo offensive linemen on the second level and Northern Illinois linebackers not being able to shed blocks. You're not always going to be open. You need, you need Sean Follier, Boomer Maiden, and those guys to shed some blocks and make some plays against the run. They go right back to Hunt. Bounces it outside. Bounces off a tackle. Sets up the block from Thompson for a first down. I think someone was Kareem, Rocky. <laughs> Good call, partner. I'll tell you what, he just bounced off a 265-pound defensive lineman, Rashawn Mosley. Cuts to the outside, great vision, and bang. Actually, that was Mario Jones, a 290-pound defensive tackle. Kareem Hunt looking strong here tonight. When he was in high school, they made up T-shirts, you've been Kareem for when he ran over defensive players, and uh, so full of, let's say, confidence, he wore it on his recruiting trip. But now they boots, kick the snap away, and there's the break the Huskies needed. Johnson falls on it. The snap looked like it hit Hunt. Yeah, the snap was to the right of Philip Ely. We saw Northern Illinois center Andrew Ness with a bad snap, and now it's the senior center for Toledo, Reuben Carter, with a snap that's just a little bit off to the right of Ely. Never got up. 
Yeah, ball hits the ground. As you said, Eamon, a big time break, a turnover that Northern Illinois desperately needed as Toledo was driving. So now Buono in the backfield. Despite the running issues, obviously down by just a touchdown, they're not going to go away from their bread and butter. And here is Buono running hard up the middle. Four yard pickup out to the 40, brought down by Chase Murdoch. And that was a Northern Illinois style of formation there. One wide receiver, pack everyone in, a couple tight ends, feed that ball up the middle. And now second and six. And that's what Rod Carey was telling us. Of all the plays, we've just made one more. Now Hare on the keeper, cannot get away. Stops just shy of the 45. Murdoch again with another tackle. You saw Chase Murdoch yesterday. The coaches can say it's just another game and they're not worried about the streak. The players say another thing. Yeah, we talked to him in the weight room and he said, yeah, that's a little bit of coach speak. The guys on this team are walking around talking about, look, we've never, not one person on this team has beaten NIU. We want to come out and be the aggressor tonight. Now third and one. Wanya gets it. Barely. Woodley hit him. Yeah, that was a great field by number 30, Juwan Woodley. Juwan just kept those legs driving as he does so well. All his runs with great pad level. Wayman gets those shoulders leaned forward. He likes to deliver the blow, not take it. Now here, pressure up the middle, gets away. Scrambling to the left. And escapes out of bounds after picking up some yards. Allen Covington coming right up the middle. Forced him out of the pocket. Now Tommy Lee Lewis is down. So, very scary moment here for the Huskies. Quint mentioned the injuries he's been battling throughout his career. As Quint said, it was the ankle injury this year in the opener. Looks like they're checking out the possibly the knee. So while they take a look at Tommy Lee Lewis, we'll step aside. I thought you said they got a Buick. I thought they did. Hmm, is that a Buick? So where are you? Using the built-in Wi-Fi in Tina's new Buick. My grandpa used to drive a Buick. It doesn't look like a Buick. No kidding. Okay, who wants smoothies? That's not your grandpa. Now get the best of the remaining 2015s. Current lessees, switch to Buick with this low mileage lease on this Encore for around $175 a month with just $175 due at signing. When a moment turns romantic, why pause to take a pill? Or stop to find a bathroom? Cialis for daily use is approved to treat both erectile dysfunction and the urinary symptoms of BPH, like needing to go frequently, day or night. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions and medicines and ask if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain, as it may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Do not drink alcohol in excess. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injury, get medical help right away for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss in hearing or vision, or any symptoms of an allergic reaction, stop taking Cialis and get medical help right away. Ask your doctor about Cialis for daily use and a free 30 tablet trial. More cheese, more pepperoni, more, I mean less money. It's the deep, deep dish count. Get Little Caesars premium Detroit style deep, deep dish pizza for not eight but six bucks until November 15th. Pizza, pizza. Ready, I'm ready. Intel's best processor is here. So you can take this very real, very terrifying memory Introducing Intel's new 6th generation core processor. It's our best processor ever. It's on! Come on, get had basically been the Northern Illinois offense here tonight with five catches and 125 yards, but 
Frustrating night now in a scary moment. Yeah, and we'll see on the replay. I mean, it's the feared and dreaded non-contact injury. He plants that left leg, and the knee just seems to do something funny. And that's the, what they're looking at right now, is the left, left knee of Tommy Lee Lewis. It was his right ankle this year, his left foot last year. Now it's the left knee they're looking at. Second and five. Here, looking for the deep ball to Galladay. That looks like it's going to be an interception by Mathis. Trayvon Mathis. At six foot, goes up higher and gets the ball, takes it away from the 6'4 Galladay. We talked about the go-to vertical guy on this offense, Kenny Galladay. They're going to go to him, and they come out of the break trying to take a shot. But the sophomore, Trayvon Mathis, who has about a four inch height disadvantage, just plays the ball perfectly aiming. and he gets good body position, then turns back and finds the football, tracks it in the air, and comes down with it. Fantastic play by number six. So the Huskies get the break on the bad snap, but they give it right back. Now Swanson. Maybe a yard. You know, Rocky, you talked about the linebackers having to do more to get off blocks and make tackles. Anything, any adjustments schematically you can do if you're Northern Illinois right now? Well, of course, you can always bring the safety into the box. Number two, Marlon Moore, Brandon Mays, get that extra body. But then once they do that, Toledo's not stupid. They're going to throw that ball to the perimeter of the field and make you tackle somebody one-on-one. -on -one. There we go. To Thompson, and that's a one-on-one -on -one tackle in space. Marlon Moore. One yard pickup, so now it'll be third and long for Ely and the Rockets. Marlon Moore, the leading tackler on this football team. It's interesting, in the first two years of his career, he was a cornerback. They moved him to safety to try to play that Jimmy Ward role. He does a nice job just seeing the ball, driving on the tackle. Jimmy Ward setting the standard here for Northern Illinois at the safety position. Eli hit as he throws, has a man open, but it's too far out of the reach of Cody Thompson. He was behind the defense. And they tried a little double move right there to Cody Thompson. Saw this play yesterday in the walkthrough. Chad Beebe. See a guy named Beebe wearing 82. Yes, that's the son of the former Buffalo Bill. Great Don Beebe. What a great player he was. Wow. Ellis from his own end zone. Rugby style is going to go for it. He's going to get it. The fake punt for the first down. Beebe drills him out of bounds, but way too late. Northern Illinois fell asleep. That was wide open. And you'll see the guy playing the end position from Northern Illinois to the offense's right. He comes inside the up back, and there the defense has no edge. You see it right there. Now it's just the offensive line. Those blockers just create a wall. And how about the guts on Matt Campbell running a fake punt from that area of the field? You can tell the young coach, 35-year-old Matt Campbell, He's going to pull out all the stops here tonight. I thought you were going to say guts of the punter for taking the hit and not sliding. <laughs> he has or, some guts, too. Or running to the parking lot. But B.B. frustrated, coming all the way up. He thought he was going to get his hands on it for a return. And then he comes up and lays out the punter. But you talked about Matt Campbell and a, read a great quote from his AD, Mike O'Brien, saying he was born, in my view, to be a head football coach, one of the rising stars in that profession. And you know, Toledo and Northern Illinois fans aren't the only ones watching this game. ADs all across America with all the job openings that are gonna happen in that domino. Know the name of Matt Campbell. Was there 10 job already, openings already? already? We're just one week into November. He's certainly on that list. I know Rocket fans don't wanna hear that, but Matt Campbell is certainly a rising star in the college football profession. His father, Rick, is a coach. Played for legendary coaches at the high school and collegiate level. Now Ely throwing it up high. Thompson out of bounds. So it looks like the, the fake punt was all for Nah here. 
Certainly going to help them in field position, but you're right, they cannot build off of it. And it was, it was great effort by by Thompson on the on the uh, on the out route, just a little bit too far out of bounds. He actually does come down with it, looks like, but just had a foot out. So now Ellis again. We'll see if Coach Campbell has anything up his sleeve here. Very good kick. BB lets it go and it takes a rocket bounce. And we mark it out at the 12. So a pretty eventful few minutes here for Nick Ellis. First the fake and the run. And now a 51-yard punt. No return. So Ellis doing his job. Now the Rockets deep back on the field. The legendary low-fat Subway Sweet Onion Chicken Teriyaki. Tender, all-white meat teriyaki glazed chicken with crisp, vibrant veggies drizzled in our sweet onion sauce. All on freshly baked bread and under 400 calories. Only at Subway. I thought you said you were going to test drive this Buick first. I am test driving it for 24 hours. Nice Buick. I guess the test drive last night went well. Actually, I'm still on it. You know we're test driving this Buick for 24 hours, right? Yeah. So what are you doing? Test washing it. Oh, okay. Well, let me know when you're done. I'm going to take it test shopping. The Buick 24 Hours of Happiness Test Drive on your terms and schedule. Current lessees, switch to Buick and get a low mileage lease on this Buick Enclave for around $341 a month. The keys to this home belong to Mark and Alyssa Anderson. They bought the place four months ago on what was arguably the scariest day of their lives. Neither has any idea what the future holds for them. But they bought into a 30-year mortgage anyway. That was bold. They must really believe in themselves. Buy in. Quicken Loans. Home buy, refi, power. AT&T presents the strongest of the strong. Let's see who can build the strongest college football app. Rocket? Right, so I built a college football emoji keyboard that helps fans talk to each other during the game. Strong. Emmett? Potato skins. You said make an app. Is that not right? I made pot stickers that look like tiny football helmets. Who's strong enough to watch the college football playoff with Bo? Get stronger with AT&T, the network with the nation's strongest 4G LTE signal. The legendary low-fat Subway Sweet Onion Chicken Teriyaki. Tender, all-white meat teriyaki glazed chicken with crisp, vibrant veggies drizzled in our sweet onion sauce. All on freshly baked bread and under 400 calories. Only at Subway. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Buick. Proud partner of the NCAA. Undefeated Toledo looking to snap a five-game losing streak to Northern Illinois. Leads the Huskies 17 to 10 with 9.39 to play in the first half. Let's go down to the field and check in with Quint Kessnick. A Husky wide receiver, Tommy Lee Lewis, left knee injury, doubtful to return. I'll get an update after halftime. He's been their lone bright spot in the passing game. They've gotten nothing done on the ground. Trayvon Hester and Orion Jones, two big D tackles from Toledo, have been dominant. Four yard run by Bonio. He gets it again. Gets the first down, breaks one tackle, lowers the shoulder for an extra yard or two. Mathis and Woodley. With the tackle. And obviously right now with Tommy Lee Lewis not in the game and probably not coming back, Northern Illinois needs to find another weapon. This time they're ready at the line. Cheatham Norrills comes up. But you know, Rocky, it feels like a much bigger Toledo lead, but every time you look at the score, it's just a touchdown. Yeah, and that's the thing. Look, Clint talked about it. This game usually, if in the last five years, has come down to the fourth quarter. Northern Illinois is not swaying from their game plan. They're still going to establish the run. The game's still close. Now Hare has an alley to run, and he slides for a first down right at the marker at the 38. Woodley 
there to see him down. Looks like they're marking him just short. That's the second time tonight we've seen a nice scramble break decision by Drew Harris. Not there. He, he tried a little bit of a stunt. He sees that green grass in front of him. He takes off. Now quarterback keeper for the first down when Rod Carey was sprinting down the sidelines for a timeout. They didn't give it to him. He's a bit frustrated right now, but he got the first down. So now to the pistol. Now Joel Buono, nothing doing again. So the battle up front right now is going to Toledo on both sides. Orion Jones with another tackle. I'll tell you what, you just mentioned it's those two big body guys, the defensive tackles, Orion Jones on that play, Trayvon Hester, that are really just bottling up this Northern Illinois run. Those linemen cannot move those big bodies off the line of scrimmage. Both those players, all Mac performers a year ago, and Hare loses his footing. So a stumble there, but Coach Carey knew the battle, and that was, did he get hurt? The trainer's quickly sprinting out to see if Hare might have hurt an ankle. The backup is Ryan Graham, a redshirt freshman out of Wheaton, Illinois. I'm not sure if something gave out on Hare on that play or if he just slipped. It looks like the right an ankle that they're attending to right now. As he goes to push off at him, it looks like something either gave out or he goes straight to the turf. I wonder, you know, a calf or an Achilles, something like that. Obviously, it's hard to speculate up here, but something certainly gave out on the right leg of hair. If they have to go to Graham. Wow, it looks look like at they that. will on third and 12. He's thrown five passes all year, but we talk about Buono and the wide receiver threats. As Hare goes, goes the Huskies. Yeah, you're right. And the three losses they've had to Ohio State, BC, and Central Michigan, those are all three games that he did not play well. So, as he talked about, this team so far this year, as good as the run game has gone for them, this team's gone the way that Drew Hare, their quarterback, has gone, and that's a critical loss. So now Ryan Graham, the redshirt freshman out of Wheaton, Illinois. And now, look, Northern Illinois is going to have to rely even more on that run game to stay in this football game. Third and 12, do they let him throw it? No, the draw to Huff. Well short of the first down. So they'll send out the punting team. So now Jones at the Toledo 20. Jones, dangerous catch. So good coverage by the Huskies, but a mistake by Jones going back. Lucky he held on to that one. Josh Corcoran with the coverage. So the Rockets get the ball back inside their own 10 when we return to the glass bowl after this. Bears Chargers at 810 Eastern, Monday on ESPN. I thought you said they got a Buick. I thought they did. Hmm, is that a Buick? So are you? Using the built-in Wi-Fi in Tina's new Buick. My grandpa used to drive a Buick. It doesn't look like a Buick. No kidding. Okay, who wants smoothies? That's not your grandpa. Now get the best of the remaining 2015s. Current lessees, switch to Buick with this low mileage lease on this Encore for around $175 a month with just $175 due at signing. Arby's and A1 have always been close to each other in the phone book. But now, Arby's and A1 are as close as two friends could be, snuggling together on a sandwich. Arby's, we have the meat. Will it be the front left or the passenger side rear? Which tire will be the free one? 
Buy three tires at Pet Boys and get the fourth free instantly. Which one is totally up to you? You're in the power seat. Watching football together is great, but I think women would agree. Huddling with their man after the game is nice too. The thing is, about half of men over 40 have some degree of erectile dysfunction. Well, Viagra helps guys with ED get and keep an erection. Ask your doctor if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Viagra if you take nitrates for chest pain. It may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Side effects include headache, flushing, upset stomach, and abnormal vision. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. Stop taking Viagra and call your doctor right away if you experience a sudden decrease or loss in vision or hearing. Ask your doctor about Viagra. Now available in new single packs. A promise was made to America's veterans that they and their families would get the benefits and support they earned. We fight for all veterans, so that promise is kept. DAV. For help, visit DAV.org. An undefeated season is on the line here tonight, and that'll be the story Saturday on ABC at 3.30 Eastern. Number one ranked Clemson, hot off the presses tonight at 8-0, takes on 7-1 and 16th ranked Florida State, presented by K Jewelers. Then at 8, we have Ohio State, the number three team in the defending national champions, hosting Minnesota. That's presented by Walmart. Both games will also be streaming live on Watch ESPN Clemson clinches the ACC Atlantic with the win. Toledo back to the ground game. Let's check in with Quint Kessnick for an injury update on Northern Illinois quarterback. Eamon, no, no good news from this Northern Illinois sideline. Drew Hare right now on crutches with a boot on, and he is heading towards the Northern Illinois locker room. His dad actually came down out of the stands. Uh, just not a good scene right now with their two biggest playmakers injured. And both really non-contact. We, you know, yeah. just slipping and losing footing on the turf. And that was Hunt getting out to the 10. Brought down by Cameron Clinton Earl. Inside six minutes to go here in the first half. Cremont. He's been through so much. He had an off-season surgery. Then he was suspended the first two games of the season. Then he injures the hamstring. So he's been through a lot. Matt Campbell said he took it like a man and is now looks back like he's back healthy and being his productive self. Now they empty the backfield on third and five from the 10. Ely throws high, looking for Thompson. So it's been a roller coaster night for Ely. Started off cold, then he had that hot streak, and now his passes have been off the mark lately. Yeah, they really have. I mean, we saw this a couple weeks ago versus Iowa State. Just some passes seem to, at times, I don't know the reason, but they just seem to sail on Philip Beebe, and that's, you can see him shaking his head. That was a wide open wide receiver that would have been converted for a first down. So again, the door should be open here for the Huskies. Down by just a touchdown with five and a half to go. They should get good field position here. And a horrible punt. Wow. Let's see where they're going to mark this one. This could be inside the 20. And that's 19 a, yard line. Wow. That's a danger, those rugby punts. You, you know, you see it so often. I know you get the guy outside the pocket and give him a clear lane to kick but you see this happen sometimes they can't really set their feet and drive their leg into that football i think that's part of the problem on that one now obviously to be fair his last punt was a boomer that pushed bb back but now all eyes on ryan graham the red shirt freshman out of wheaton illinois his father played at northern illinois and he's going to throw and he swings it out to buonio a two-yard pickup. For more on number 17 in white now, let's check in with Quinn. That's right, uh, Eamon. Drew Hare will not return to the game. All the pressure now on Graham, who's known as a running quarterback. He's kind of like mini Jordan Lynch. He's even got the red hair. But how much can you run your backup quarterback knowing that if he gets hurt, you got to turn to your third? Juanyo, stutter stepping his way down to a first down. Well, I mentioned Graham's dad played at Northern Illinois. His uncle, Kent, Played collegiately first at Notre Dame, part of that 1988 national championship team, backing up Tony Rice, then transferred to Ohio State, then had a long NFL career with the Giants and Cardinals. So football's in his blood, played at that powerhouse Wheaton 
in Wheaton, Illinois. Now, well, Quinn, he took a hit there, so they're going to run him because he lowered the shoulder into Jawan Woodley. Not much doing on that play for Graham. Well, as Quinn talked about, I, look, I don't see this offense of style changing that much. It still could just now be more on the shoulders of Joel Buonio, Jordan Huff. And even more critical to get number 19, their big, tall wide receiver, Kenny Dalladay, Dalladay in the game. Buonio lowers the shoulder. Gets down to the five, six-yard pickup. And now it's third and goal. So now the question is, do you trust, trust your young quarterback who just came in the game to throw a fade route in the back of the end zone looking for Juwan Breskison, or you just run the ball here? Galladay in the slot, and they run it to Buonya. And he is stopped. Hester and Woodley in on the play. That was a great job by number 30, Juwan Woodley. This linebacking core took a big-time shot last week when their best linebacker, Jalen Coleman, goes down versus East, uh, Eastern Michigan. Juwan Woodley's now playing that will linebacker position, did a good job scraping across and making the tackle. So now Hagan on for a chip shot. 20-yarder. He's already hit one tonight. And that's good. So after the bad punt, they take advantage and get three. So Coach Carey's club inching closer against Toledo. AT&T presents the strongest of the strong. These all look like very strong cheese plates. But for this competition, we have a special guest judge, Lee Corso. How you doing, guys? Cheese Stadium. It's a chigo. It's a football. Strong cheese plate, Jerry. Yeah, that's my head. Who's strong enough to watch the college football playoff with Bo? Get stronger with AT&T, the network with the nation's strongest 4G LTE signal. In game one of the World Series, Lorenzo Cain stole a base from Kansas City. And breakfast for all of America. So run into Taco Bell on Thursday, November 5th from 7 to 11 a.m. to score your free a.m. crunch wrap. Way to go, Lorenzo. PC does Infinity Edge Display. PC does what no PC has done before. Does yours? I thought you said you were going to test drive this Buick first. I am test driving it for 24 hours. Nice Buick. I guess the test drive last night went well. Actually, I'm still on it. You know we're test driving this Buick for 24 hours, right? Yeah. So what are you doing? Test washing it. Oh, OK. Well, let me know when you're done. I'm going to take it test shopping. The Buick 24 Hours of Happiness Test Drive on your terms and schedule. Current lessees, switch to Buick and get a low mileage lease on this Buick Enclave for around $341 a month. Let's hide in the attic. No, in the basement. Why can't we just get in the running car? Are you crazy? Let's hide behind the chainsaws. If you're in a horror movie, you make poor decisions. That's what you do. Shh, I'm being quiet. Breathing on me. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to Geico. It's what you do. Welcome back to Toledo. Good crowd on hand. Looking to see the Rockets snap a five-game losing streak against Northern Illinois. Now a Husky team now. It looks like it's going to go the rest of the way without two of their best offensive players, the quarterback Drew Hare and Tommy Lee Lewis, the wide receiver, who already had five catches for over 120 yards, both out with non-contact leg injuries. But the Huskies won't go away, down by four. Wilshire and Johnson back to receive. This will be Wilshire from the six. Across the 20. Out near the 30. So a good run there and a late flag. So just as I was about to say, good field position again for the Rockets. It looks like they'll be backed up.
During the return, holding, return team number 42, 10-yard penalty, first down. All right, let's check in with Chris Cotter back in the studio. All right, Aim and DXL halftime report coming your way in about three minutes' time. Trevor Maddich will join me. First college football playoff rankings released. We'll go through it, talk about some teams from the SEC, Big Ten, where they ended up. Big games with Clemson and Florida State, and also in the SEC, LSU and Alabama. We'll preview those coming up. DXL halftime report. Until then, back up to you guys in the last game. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. Looking forward to that. Again, if you're just joining us, Toledo checking in at 24th. Undefeated, wins over Arkansas and Iowa State. The bullet points on the Rockets' resume. And right now, they're just worried about Northern Illinois and the MAC trying to get to Detroit. Ely. In and out of the hands of Daryl Richards. And right now, this Toledo offense, the last two drives, they've been really out of sync. High throws by Philip Ely. Ball's going through the hands of wide receivers. Yeah, you know, a real opportunity here for Toledo. Look, Northern Illinois, their, their quarterback and their best weapon and wide receiver are both out, and they only have a three-point lead. Excuse me, four-point lead. It's that Notre Dame master. You got, got it. On Rocky. <laughs> you got it. Now they get it out to Swanson. Throw down there on the sideline, no flag. Marlon Moore, Rocket fans want one, but it looked like he was in bounds when they got his hands on him. Yeah, I think the Rocket fans won the penalty, but it looked like he was still in bounds as the defender took him to the turf here. We'll get another look at it. Yeah, I think that was a legal play. So third and three. Swanson, late surge. And yes, the ref gives him a little shimmy move to the right for an extra yard. Looked like he originally was going to get spotted short of the first down. But that last extra effort moves the chains. Ely, high throw, picked off. Mays at the 20. Brandon Mays with the pick. We mentioned Ely all of a sudden becoming inaccurate, and it was another high throw. And this time he does not get it back. Yeah, a little bit high and just too far out in front of the wide receiver. Toledo, again, cannot take advantage of a situation. It's a slant route. And Northern Illinois is playing a lot more zone now. Those safeties are just sitting back. Ball goes right into the hands of Brandon Mays. Now, Rocky, both coaches tried to downplay the history. Coach Carey saying, look, if you try to play last year's game, you, you know, you're going to get lost. But you're a player. If you're in that Toledo sideline right now, what are your thoughts thinking we can't put these guys away? Yeah, you're saying, look, here we go again. It's kind of the same story. We play well, but Northern Illinois just hangs around. We can't deliver that knockout blow. Again, even with their two best players out of the game, just a four-point ball game, and now great field position for NIU. Juanyo with a seven-yard run. They go right back to him. Driven back by Chase Murdoch, who's been very active here in the first half. In Northern Illinois' MO, the, most of the years, look, they, they, they're not going to turn away from the run. They, their philosophy is we're just going to keep pounding away, pounding away, and as this game goes further and further down the line, we're going to wear your guys out. And it looks to be that's maybe starting to be the case here. Third and two, two tight ends to the right. Wyman and Maxwell. Juanyo up the middle. Right at the mark. Jones with the tackle. They're, it looks like they're going to have to bring out the chains. Nope, they're saying fourth down. And Coach Carey isn't looking for three here. Now, of course, that's because they called it a first down. Took them a while to move the chains and change the marker. Juanyo, bad snap again. And Graham falls on it. All the way back at the 25. And look, you have to believe that Andrew Ness, again, fifth-year senior, he, he's worried up there. He's got his hands full with Orion Jones and Trayvon Hester. That's the second time we've seen an Aaron snap. And again, you just think in his First mind, he's worried about blocking those guys. Northern Illinois. 
30 seconds. You also timeout. have to wonder if the young quarterback was ready for it. Coach Carey takes a timeout with 49 seconds left, a loss of 14. Earlier in the game, they had a bad snap, cost them 32 yards. Saturday on ESPN, we've got two Big Ten games for you with eight no teams putting their perfect records on the line at 3.30 Eastern. Number nine, Iowa battles Indiana, presented by Cars.com. Then seventh-ranked Michigan State takes on Nebraska in Lincoln at seven, presented by Hilton Hotels. Both games are also streaming live on Watch ESPN. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of football that's left to be played, and the Spartans can control their own destiny. But it, it's hard to explain how Ohio State, who pretty much has played nobody, is number three. And Michigan State, who's already beaten Michigan, yep. and Oregon, I know Oregon's not what everyone thought they could be, is at seven. But right now, we'll let you pontificate that about that when we get some dead time. I got but plenty of to pontificate I, about, too. You're right. Second and 23. And they're bringing pressure off the edge. Picked up. And Graham, with some poise, finds Galladay. That's a great confidence booster for the young quarterback, Ryan Graham, getting that throw to his tall receiver, Galladay, on the outside. So now it's still third and long. Rocky, do you trust your redshirt freshman quarterback here, or do you live for a field goal? I think you live for a field goal. Keep it on the ground. Trust Buanya. And here is Buanya up the middle, hit hard by Allen Covington. Wow. Coach Carey told us they have dudes up front. <laughs> we talked about Orion Jones and Trayvon Hester, but Allen Covington, the defensive end, playing essentially a two-point in this position, just delivers the blow on Buanya as he's trying to bust it to the outside. So it looks like Northern Illinois will let it tick down and then take a timeout so that the field goal attempt is the last play of the half. I think this is the safe call here. Again, you got your backup quarterback in. You're trying to get him some confidence. You go to the ground game. It doesn't Second work, but now you're set up for a nice field Northern goal. Northern Illinois, 30-second timeout. And of course, Toledo has one to play with if they want to play the ISOM game. Coming up next, it'll be the DXL halftime report at the half. Chris Cotter and Trevor Maddich will have more on the debut of the college football playoff rankings here in 2015, and they'll look ahead to those critical matchups, including Clemson and Florida State. But now Coach Carey looking to pull within one. In a game where he's already seen his starting quarterback and starting wide receiver go down with injury. 29-yard kick, and Matt Campbell does indeed. Third and final, charge Burn the timeout, final timeout. Toledo. 30 second timeout. Hagan's already made two from 36 and 20. This will be 29 yards. So far, the story here the first half, we mentioned the Northern Illinois injuries, but it's also been Northern Illinois' inability to stop the ground game for most of the first half. And offensively, obviously, with Tommy Lee Lewis out of the game, he had 125 yards in that first half before going down with the injury. Now it's been switching the ground game. Chad Beebe's the holder. 29-yard kick to pull within one at the half. And it's good. So Hagen delivers nine of the 16 points. And the Rockets head to the locker room with a one-point lead. But again, how will Northern Illinois play the second half without its starting quarterback and one of its key offensive weapons, Tommy Lee Lewis, out for the game? But if you're NIU, you got to consider this a big-time victory. You're out down your best two offensive players and just now a one-point deficit. 
going in the, in the third quarter. Let's go down to Quint with Coach Campbell. Coach, you're up 17 to 7 and appeared like you were in control. What happened next? Yeah, you know, I think we kind of got rattled a little bit and we lost our poise. You know, you can't turn the football over, which we did twice, and obviously that let them back in the football game. So, you know, th with these two teams playing, it's going to be four quarters, and the team that executes the best is going to win the football game. You know that from history. What do you tell your guys about that right now? You've been here before, this exact same spot. Yeah, exactly what I told you. You know, I think it's about our poise, it's about our execution, and if we can do that, then we'll put ourselves in position to win the football game. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, all right, so Coach Campbell looking to snap a five-game losing streak to Northern Illinois. Our score at the half, Toledo 17, Northern Illinois 16. Now let's go to Chris Cotter and Trevor Maddich for the DXL Halftime Report. Thank you, Eamon. Appreciate it. DXL Halftime. Trevor Maddich is here with me in studio. And when you look at this game, the way it transpired, especially early on, how was it that Northern Illinois was able to stay with the 24th-ranked team in the country? Big plays, Tommy Lee Lewis. I mean, Drew Hare to Tommy Lee Lewis. 125 yards, the entire rest of the Northern Illinois offense, half that, about 61 yards combined. And those big plays to Tommy Lee Lewis are what really has kept Northern Illinois in this game on the offensive side. It's so open. Yeah, it's a double move. Yeah. You put him on a safety, you put him on a nickel back, and he does a little double move, and then goes right up the middle. And the thing is, Toledo knew that Tommy Lee Lewis could do this. They practiced against this specifically, and they <laughs> still couldn't stop it. Only gets a four-man front, too, in terms of rushing the quarterback, too. You would think they'd had it fixed after that first bomb. You would think they would, but you combine that then with the yep. Northern Illinois defense, which has been playing very, very well, and getting turnovers and really limiting big plays on Toledo's side, and that's why they're in this game right now. Unfortunately for them, too, you're going to have to do it without Tommy Lee Lewis and Drew Hare, the quarterback, who both got hurt, and neither one of them expected back in the second half. It's going to be Ryan Grahams to win or lose at quarterback for Northern Illinois. When we come back... The first rankings released from the College Football Playoff Committee. Not many surprises, maybe a couple of debatable teams. We'll talk about it next. Watching football together is great, but I think women would agree. Huddling with their man after the game is nice, too. The thing is, about half of men over 40 have some degree of erectile dysfunction. Well. Viagra helps guys with ED get and keep an erection. Ask your doctor if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Viagra if you take nitrates for chest pain. It may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Side effects include headache, flushing, upset stomach, and abnormal vision. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. Stop taking Viagra and call your doctor right away if you experience a sudden decrease or loss in vision or hearing. Ask your doctor about Viagra. Now available in new single packs. For a limited time at Chili's, mix and match fajitas come with free bottomless chips and salsa. Fill the fajitas with your Fresh Mex favorites and let the free chips and salsa flow. I don't need to be told I'm special. I know what, what it took to be here. What can you give me that, that no one else can? I don't want to just sit, sit in the classroom. I want to go places and do things. I want more. Help, Help me get that. I just want the world. We believe in possibilities. We're about getting things done, challenging traditions, and starting a few of our own. You see, we find new ways to do things. We like our way of living and taking care of our land. Who are we? We are Kubota. You know, Viagra helps guys with erectile dysfunction get and keep an erection. Talk to your doctor about Viagra. Ask your doctor if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Viagra if you take nitrates for chest pain. It may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Side effects include headache, flushing, upset stomach, and abnormal vision. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. Stop taking Viagra and call your doctor right away if you experience a sudden decrease or loss in vision or hearing. Ask your doctor about Viagra. You're watching the DXL Halftime Report. Rockets using that ground game over 200 yards on the ground to forge just a one-point lead though at the half 
over Northern Illinois in the Glass Bowl. College football playoff rankings released. First ranking today, live on ESPN just moments ago. Here's your top 10. Not much of a surprise in terms of who is in the top 10, maybe a little bit in terms of the order. You don't have Baylor, you don't have TCU in the top four. Florida rounds out the top 10. By the way, conspicuous in their absence, the Pac-12. Coming in at number 11 is Stanford and number 12, Utah. Dabo Sweeney, for the number one ranked Clemson Tigers, talks about being in that enviable position. He is, I don't think anybody should be having a party uh, over what the poll is, and I don't think anybody should be disappointed. I mean, if you look back at last year, uh, Ohio State was, I think, 15th or 16th on the first poll and won the national championship. Notre Dame was top 10, finished unranked. Georgia Tech was not ranked and finished number nine. So there's a lot of ball to be played. I'm proud of our team because we're 8-0, and, no, and uh, you know, that's all good. I've voted us, you know, really, really high myself the last couple weeks. I believe in our team, uh, but we got a long way to go. Our focus is 100% on trying to find a way to beat uh, an outstanding Florida State team, uh, a, a team that we've had a very difficult time with the last few years. Well, we're going to get to Clemson and Florida State here in a little bit. Let's talk about the rankings first. And a couple of teams. Really, Alabama, the top one-loss team, they're in the top four. And you can look at a team like Florida, also out of the SEC with one loss. Their resumes look very similar. Why is Alabama in the top four and Florida's coming in at 10? The tape. And, and this is important, Chris, because it tells us what the committee is valuing right now. When you look at Florida, Alabama, their, their wins and strength of schedule are very similar. But their losses are not similar. Alabama lost at home to the 8th ranked team, 18th ranked team, Ole Miss, uh, by a touchdown. Florida lost on the road to the second ranked team at LSU the week after their starting quarterback got suspended for the rest of the season. So while the wins are fairly similar, Alabama a little bit better, Alabama's loss is far worse. So Florida should be number three and Alabama should be 10. And here's why they're not, because when you put on the tape, what you see is two good defenses, but an Alabama offense that is much better and much more reliable, especially on the offensive line than Florida. That tells me that they value what they see on the tape, and that's important. All right, we're going to talk about this Clemson-Florida State game here for a little bit. Clemson, number one team in the country in this first poll, and you think they're the best team, but getting better in some areas. I do. There's a lot of teams that have flaws. Really, coming into the season, all the contenders had some flaws, and Clemson's flaw was it wasn't really able to enforce its will as a run-blocking team at the point of attack. Wayne Gallman, their running back, bailed them out. They got better at the point of attack. But still, there are some issues. Look at Gallman here, make a guy miss, who's unblocked at the point of attack, right? He had to do that a lot early in the season. So their, their rushing yardage, their stats on the box score looked much better than they should have looked based on the way the blocking was. Well, the blocking is getting better. The tight ends are blocking better. The offensive line, which had a bunch of new moving parts, has gotten better. And so Clemson right now, if you want to pick the most complete team in the country, mm -hmm. you'd be hard-pressed not to choose the Tigers. That game going to be in Death Valley, 3.30 on ABC. Uh, and the one thing about that game, too, Dalvin Cook, the running back from Florida State, he has been practicing this week. So that'll be a big help to the Seminoles if he can go when he's close to 100%. All right, still to come here on the DXL Halftime Report, we're going to talk about the big game in the SEC on Saturday. LSU and Alabama. It's all
Football Primetime, presented by Jimmy John's. Toledo's perfect season and 24th ranking in the college football playoff rankings are on the line here tonight as they try to stop a five-game losing streak to Northern Illinois. We are ready for the third quarter. The Huskies within one, despite suffering two huge injuries in that first half. Well, at the beginning, it was Tom, the Tommy Lee Lewis show. Two big-time catches. He had five receptions for 125 yards. Was really the story of the offense for Northern Illinois. Then the nightmare scenario. A non-contact knee injury. He goes out. Next series, their quarterback, Drew Hare, goes down and looks to be out of the game. So critical that right now, Northern Illinois is still just one point away from beating this game. And moments ago, Quint caught up with Northern Illinois head coach Rod Carey. Have on your play calling. Well, they won't now. I mean, they did in the first half. Kind of tightened things up a little bit when Ryan got in there, but now he's got to run the offense. What are your expectations for Ryan Graham? Well, that he performs. I mean, he's a good player. That's why we got him here. Thanks, Coach. You bet. So Ryan Graham, the redshirt freshman out of Wheaton, Illinois, taking over for Drew Hare. But it's going to be the Husky defense first that certainly made some adjustments, Rocky, in that second quarter to slow down this Toledo offense. Yeah, they did. Toledo was really rolling their first four possessions at 190 yards of offense and 17 points. Then their last four possessions, only 83, two, 83 yards, two punts, and a lot of just errant throws by Philip Ely. This will be Johnson from the 11. Drag down at the 27. So again, Philip Ely lost his touch in the second quarter as we take a look at the stats for the first half. And the Rockets were led by the running game early. Yeah, 204 rushing yards in the first half. I don't anticipate Toledo doing anything different. Keep pounding that run. But when they do go to the air, Philip Ely and these wide receivers have got to connect and haul some of those passes in. So they start with Hunt in the backfield. He gets it here. Has an alley out to the 35. Number three, three, hunt the ball carrier. Brought down by Brandon Mays. Six yard pickup for Hunt. And we just haven't called the names of any of these linebackers for Northern Illinois most of the night. It's been the defensive line and the safeties. That second level is getting blocked. First level took care of business there. Corey Thomas with the penetration. So again, if you're the Rockets, you're really looking to get into a rhythm here offensively. The last thing you want to do, of course, is go three and out. No question. I think in this situation, you look for your go-to guy, Corey Jones. Get him the ball out in the slot. See if he can make a guy or two miss. Husky showing pressure up the middle. Now Ely with time. Checks down to Hunt, who makes the grab, but short of the first down. Well short as Fallier and Smalls came up for the tackle. Bobby Jones, the fourth in on the play as well. Great job by those linebackers. See Fallier, he was sick last week, missed that game. Certainly like to have him back in the lineup. Nice job forcing Toledo to punt. So Ellis comes out, and he had an eventful... First half, he had the fake punt where he ran for about 15 yards along the sidelines and got drilled. Then he had a great punt of more than 50 yards, and then he shanked one to set up a Northern Illinois field goal. This is a good one. Beebe's going to let it go, and it goes out of bounds inside the 20, it looks like. Let's see where they mark it. Right at the 19. But here comes Ryan Graham, the red shirt freshman out of Wheaton, Illinois. You heard Coach Carey say, hey, that's why we went and got him. Yeah, and as he told Quinn, he does not anticipate this offense changing at all, nor do I. Look, they're going to run the same scheme. I just think it's going to be a lot more heavy run here for the Huskies. If you're just joining us, a strong football program. His father, Dan, played at Northern Illinois and a Tampa Bay Buck lineman. And now here he has it, keeps it himself and gets outside. He could go! One man to beat! 
And a good job by Dewan Rogers to take an angle. What a nice job. Ryan Graham with a little bit of a zone read action. He just beats the freshman Tichi to the sideline and shows a little speed there down the edge, Eamon. 38-yard gain. Now Buonio inside the 40. And again, we talked about this late in the first half, Rocky. The mental aspect starts to take a role here. Here yours Toledo. You've never beaten Northern Illinois. If you're Northern Illinois, you've never lost to Toledo. And you're saying even their starting quarterbacks out, even their stud wide receivers out, and they're within one and on the move. Here comes pressure, and Graham's not going to get away from Big Allen Covington. Yeah, the left tackle, Levon Myers, just deep set a little bit, a little bit too far. And Allen Covington just took the inside route straight to the quarterback. You see Myers just overset a little bit. And aiming to your point about Toledo, you know, you, you, that's the thing they have to fight right now is that, oh, here we go again. We, we're, we're doing well, but we just can't seem to close this game out. Their two best players are out. They got to fight that. Third and 14 pressure again, Graham. Low throw to Breskison. So Trent Voss in his face, making him hurry that throw. And if you're Toledo, that's what you want. You want to see the inexperienced quarterback from Northern Illinois put him on his heels a little bit, bring some pressure, make him feel uncomfortable in his first start. So if Jacob Ambrose out for another punt. Jones standing on the Toledo 10. Good kick to the sideline. Jones again coming up to make a dangerous catch. Goes out of bounds. He took now a he's shot. slow to get up. I think Toledo fans are wanting a targeting call here. Looks to be grabbing his leg. We'll see on the replay here. Bad decision as he just Flows away. Toledo ball. What if there was a bank that didn't just ask members to save, but also helped them to save? That allowed families to keep more of their money, letting them use any ATM nationwide for free. And because every dollar matters, didn't Nickel and Diamond's members with monthly fees, saving them more than $345 million in one year. That would be a different kind of bank. That would be USAA Bank. Go online to find out more about our free USAA secure checking account today. PC does what? PC does 360 degree rotations. PC does what no PC has done before. Does yours. See you next week, Stan. This scion's gonna bring out a whole other side of me. Hey, I love what you've done with my hair. I can't wait to set up camp. Good thing the Scion IN has plenty of space for our gear. It's getting chilly out. Mind if I put on some heat? I'm actually a bit warm, but we have dual zone climate control. Nice. Glad I sprung for the extras. Nope. All standard features that actually come standard. And no haggling with Scion's pure price. Feel like a new man. Weird, right? <laughs> Introducing the new IA and IM from Scion. Little Caesar's hot and ready lunch combo is ready when you walk in. Perfect for the world's most impatient people. Get a lunch combo with four slices of deep, deep dish pizza and a soda for just five bucks. Only at Little Caesars. Pizza, pizza. Introducing the Bernie. The portable, environmentally friendly grill you can take anywhere. No need to gather wood or lighter fluid because the Bernie is made from natural older wood and lights with just one match. And the Bernie gives you better tasting steaks, burgers, chicken, hot dogs, s'mores, anything you can cook over an open fire. And when the party's over, the Bernie burns itself out. Just visit BernieGrill.com to get one. So turn up the heat at your next gathering with the Bernie at BernieGrill.com. Yes, New Year's Eve will be so awesome watching college football through confetti. Missing out is not an option, so plan accordingly. Toledo up by one, under 12 minutes to go, third quarter. It's the Mac and Corey Jones, punt returner, wide receiver for Toledo, helped off the field. Uh, head injury on that punt. It happened right in front of me. 
Head coach Mac Campbell came over, took a knee next to Corey. He said, Corey, it's me, it's coach. Corey, it's me, it's coach. Uh, that was an athlete who was not coherent there for over a minute, and it is highly doubtful that he'll see the football field uh, tonight. Liddell Fleming delivering that hit. And that was textbook forcible contact to the head or neck area. It doesn't matter if it was Fleming's head that hit him. His, it was actually his forearm, but that's the definition of the rule, but it wasn't called. All right, let's take a look at it again as Corey Jones is being driven into the locker room. And, you know, I mean, it's put in for concussions, and we don't want to speculate, but we understand Jones is sliding to the ground, but... Yeah, but, but that it, looks how many times have we seen right. intent is never no, of uh, part of the issue. It's forceful contact to the head or neck area. To a defenseless player. To a defenseless player. Doesn't matter if it's the helmet, the knee, the forearm. In that case, should have been called. And now the Toledo offense looking to get on track without Corey Jones. And there's the first sack. More importantly, it's a fumble. Perez Ford coming off the edge. It looks like Toledo got it back. Elijah can... So and Kinsaw fell on it. But the first sack allowed by this offensive line and Philip Ely all year. And Perez Ford is the screaming demon off the edge here. Just six foot tall, 227 pounds, but he just has such good leverage. Being, being shorter like that, Eamon, he can get underneath those offensive tackles, especially with his speed. Nice job forcing the ball loose. First indisputable sack there was some conversation in the first half about whether it was a design run or not but now on third and long the huskies are going to force a punt and get the ball back in good field position perez ford again and perez ford is feeling it right now i'll tell you what amen watching this kid on tape all week you get the feeling he's the he's the pulse of the he brings this defense some swagger you know just kind of walks that line and certainly two big plays in a row for Perez Ford. Recruited as an athlete, and then the coaches came to him and said, uh, how about defense? And he said, uh, Coach, I don't think I'm fast enough to be a corner. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, no, we're talking defensive end. No, so put your hand in the dirt and scream off the edge, and he certainly turned out to be very good at it. Love watching number 44 for the Huskies. So it's another punt for Ellis from the goal line. Beebe at the midfield. And Ellis drives him back. Beebe hustling back, can't come up with it. So Ellis making up for that shank. Drives that one 68 yards, no return. So the stalemate continues. Northern Illinois hanging around, down by one with the ball back when we return. In game one of the World Series, Lorenzo Cain stole a base for Kansas City. And breakfast for all of America. To run into Taco Bell on Thursday, November 5th from 7 to 11 a.m. to score your free a.m. crunch wrap. Way to go, Lorenzo. Oh, look, it's the new Scion IM. And there's actor Jaleel White and Wax Museum Urkel. It's weird they're hanging out, but dual zone automatic climate control keeps one toasty and the other from melting. And the seven inch touchscreen display audio system drowns out that canned laughter. It's weird they'd want dual wishbone rear suspension, but the road to redefining oneself has many twists and turns. Did I do? The new Scion IM, standard features that actually come standard. Weird, right? Big savings on brakes have arrived at Pep Boys. This week only, get $40 off any brake service package starting at $99.99. So go ahead and schedule a same day appointment at your local Pep Boys today. Trust the boys to get you there. You, my friend, recognize when a trend has reached critical mass. Yes, when others focus on one thing, you see what's coming next. You see opportunity. That's what a type E does. And so it begins. With E-Trade's Investing Insights Center, you can spot trends before they become trendy. E-Trade, opportunity is everywhere. College football brought to you by Scion. 
premium standard features that actually come standard. Weird, right? There is a bit of unease in the air here at the glass bowl as Northern Illinois hanging around down by one despite losing their starting quarterback and their wideout Tommy Lee Lewis. There is a look at Drew Hare injured in the first half on a non-contact injury. Just fell down basically out of the shotgun. Tommy Lee Lewis who's already had two big plays. But this is the Huskies quarter. When Drew Hare's normally at the controls, now it's Ryan Graham, the redshirt freshman. And a big hit there on Huff by Trayvon Hester. So a loss of one. Rocky, you know Northern Illinois here is going up against a stout defense as it's the Rockets that get things done in the third quarter. Yeah, they've seemingly owned the third quarter. Looks like this game is possibly going to come down to the fourth quarter as these games so often have the last five years. Graham on the screen low. They had that set up. Galladay, good throw, and he could have gone for a while. And look, this is obviously, if your backup quarterback is in the game, you'd love to have Tommy Lee Lewis in because he's the bubble screen guy just to shoot the ball out to him. Without him in the lineup, that safe, easy throw isn't there for Graham. Now again, Coach Carey told Quinn it doesn't change the playbook at all. But on third and long at your own 22, how much do you trust the redshirt freshman? Five on the play clock. Here comes pressure. Gets it to Galladay. Great tackle in space by Dewan Rogers. And this is where they've used Galladay the most here tonight. They like him on these crossing routes, and I think especially with Graham in, it's just a higher percentage throw than trying to chuck it down the sideline. As you mentioned, David, a nice open field tackle by Dewan Rogers forces NIU to punt. They needed 11, they got eight, so they'll punt. Who's the punt returner now with Jones being... Looks like he's back out there. Makes the fair catch signal. Thirty-eight-yard punt, no return. Great to see number four in blue and gold back out there. And a reminder: this week, college game day, built by the Home Depot, heads back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, for the huge matchup between seven and zero LSU and the seven and one Crimson Tide. Reese, Kirk, Des, Lee Corso, and the rest of the crew prep you for another full day of football like only they can do. It all starts Saturday at nine Eastern on ESPN. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Certainly some conversation in the Twitterverse about Alabama being ranked in the top four with the one loss to a two loss team Hunt has an alley in the open field at the 50 the 40 pushed out of bounds by Mays But Hunt finally able to break loose and bust off a big run and this is a, uh, we've seen this tonight They're pulling the center Ruben Carter Number 65 will loop around. He gets a great block on number 40, Folliard. And then from there, it's all hunt in the open field. 37-yard pickup. For Hunt, that energizes the crowd here. They go right back to Hunt. Maybe two. Now second and eight. See Boomer Mays, that linebacker, inching closer to the line of scrimmage. Ely steps up, looking for six. Lots of contact, and there's the flag. Paris Logan all over Russell. Parrish Logan's back was turned to the quarterback and his hands were draped all over the wide receiver as that ball was in the air. It's an easy call for the official. These guys have been going up against each other for years. Pass interference. Defense number 29. 15-yard penalty for South.
So now inside the red zone, first and 10 from the 14. Swanson in the backfield. He has it. Full head of steam inside the 10. Number two, Terry Swanson, the ball the carrier. And it's just hat on a hat by Toledo, and then the running back making the second level linebackers miss. Eight yard pickup. Now Ely on the rollout. Gets hit hard. Things getting chippy. Foyer and Ford in on the play. So now, obviously, goes without saying a huge third down play. Again, we've talked about the tight end Michael Roberts, number 80 for Toledo. Haven't really been able to find him so far today. He's on the field now in the slot. Gotta wonder if that's not a direction Philip Ely's gonna want to go. Russell and Jones to the right. Thompson and Roberts to the left. Now they empty the backfield. Huskies show blitz. And Coach Campbell wants to take a timeout with three seconds left on the First play clock. First timeout, So Toledo. while they talk things over, we'll step aside as well. Toledo clinging to a one-point lead, but knocking on the door with a third and three when we return. Bears, Chargers at 810 Eastern, Monday on ESPN. See you next week, Stan. This scion's going to bring out a whole other side of me. Hey, I love what you've done with my hair. I can't wait to set up camp. Good thing the Scion IM has plenty of space for our gear. It's getting chilly out. Mind if I put on some heat? I'm actually a bit warm, but we have dual zone climate control. Nice. Glad I sprung for the extras. Nope. All standard features that actually come standard. And no haggling with Scion's pure price. Feel like a new man. Weird, right? <laughs> Introducing the new IA and IM from Scion. <laughs> The stock market ended down sharply today despite getting off to a strong start early in the morning. Asian markets all ended the day with modest gains, with markets in China spiking 2.8%. The energy sector experienced a day of sharp drops as lower oil prices took their toll on the commodity sensitive sector. The energy sector is now down. How's it? Neil Everett here along with Stan the Man, or dare I say, the Stanimal. Don't ever talk about it. This is a story about you, the incredible you. It starts with your DNA, your 23 pairs of chromosomes that make you unique, your traits, your taste. This is a story about why you became who you are. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. You'll get personalized, detailed reports that provide unique insights into your health, traits, and ancestry. Simply order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com, provide your saliva sample at home, and mail it back. Then you'll be notified when your online reports are ready. You'll be able to explore your reports and use tools to compare your genetics with friends and family. See how your 23 pairs of chromosomes help tell the story of one incredible you. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. Welcome back to the Glass Bowl. Toledo with a one-point lead facing a third and three. And Rocky, the running game, has been in top-notch form for most of the night, led by Swanson and Kareem Hunt. Yeah, both those backs, we talked about it early on in this football game, how both these backs do such a good job running behind that revamped offensive line, five brand-new starters. But now has it set up the passing game on third and three with trips to the left. Don't see Roberts out there. He's in the he's tight, tight end, end he's formation, over. yep. Conventional tight end spot to the right. But they're going to run it to Swanson behind Roberts. Gets the first down. Marked down at the two. Foyer to Fleming on the tackle. And again, Amy, they're pulling the center, Reuben Carter, and then also on that play, the right guard, Mike Eber, essentially creating two new gaps. And what the defense has to do, they have to react. When those, when those gaps switch over, they got to react over. Carter, the transfer from Florida State. Swanson tripped up behind the line. Jawan Johnson with the tackle. No gain. You know, anytime you pull a lineman, that creates a new gap. The, the, the first gap disappears, and a new one is created outside. 
The linebackers and the safeties got to react to that and have a guy in that gap. So now mass substitutions on second and goal. Hunt in the backfield with Ely. And he gets it. Gets up in the air, but knocked back. So it'll come down to third and goal now. Number 45, Boomer Mays. He's the run stuffer. He did a good job of penetrating here and just forcing Kareem Hunt to bounce that thing a little bit more. They again pulled the center, Reuben Carter, but Boomer Mays knocked him back into the lap of Hunt. Boomer Mays has played some of his best football against Toledo, coming in with 17 tackles in three games. Now they load it up, and Hunt, no signal yet. He's short. So now Coach Campbell has to make a decision. Has Juwan Johnson had the penetration? So Juwan Johnson didn't make the tackle, but he got just enough of a piece of Hunt to slow him down. And then from there, you know, his defense stacked him up. I think if you're Matt Campbell right now, and you know, has been your nemesis, you send a message right here. We're going for it on fourth down. Two tight ends to the right. Hunt out there with Ely. It's Hunt. Touchdown, Rockets. Great job of Matt Campbell right there, seizing the moment. Sending a message. They bring the jet sweep action. What that did was it took 27. Jawan Johnson made him honor that jet motion. And then they just hand the ball to Cream Hunt with one less defender in the box. Touchdown, Toledo. So the young coach went for it. Very his stoked. offensive line and Kareem Hunt rewarded him. Extra point is good. So Kareem Hunt now with two touchdowns on the ball game. And these Rockets knew that if they want to go to Detroit, the road goes through Northern Illinois. And then the even bigger picture, of course, is a New Year's Six Bowl appearance. That is out there for the taking for a group of five team. The Toledo resume is highlighted by a win at Arkansas when they went down there and knocked off Brett Bielema's club. And again, it was the running game. Damian Jones Moore filling in for Kareem Hunt had a huge game, and then the defense came up with the big stop late. And remember, Kareem Hunt was suspended for that game, and I think that it really got these other running backs going. They knew this offense couldn't just lean on Kareem Hunt, so Damian Jones Moore got some snaps, got some experience, so did Terry Swanson. Now, again, they had to sort of validate that win the next week when they came back home against Iowa State, and Iowa State had them on the ropes, had a chance for a game-winning field goal late that the Cyclones missed, and then Damian Jones Moore punched it in in the second overtime. Turner hammered it. No, he bounces off of it. Gets a block. Wow, Argeros Turner. Got hit so hard, you heard it up here, and all he did was spin out of it and gain 20 more yards. How did he bounce out of that? I mean, you felt that shot all the way up here in the booth, Damon. Boy, I let you know you're alive. Great job by Turner. Staying on his feet, he takes a shot, but just spins out. A lot of yellow jerseys on the, on the field. Gets a few more yards. You hear this shot again, all the way from the stands. Vucelich actually did a good job forcing him out of bounds, the kicker. Covington brings down Graham after a five-yard pickup. So again, still just a one-possession game, so that doesn't drastically change the plan here for the Huskies with 350 and counting. Left, slant to Turner. Makes the grab, still on his feet. Couldn't get away from the shoestring tackle of Rodgers. But it's a first down in Rocket territory. Again, they're making things easy on Ryan Graham. A lot of these throws are... High percentage right over the middle of the field. A neat, nice, easy throw for the young quarterback. 17-yard pickup. Now Buonio brought down at the 35 by Chase Murdoch. 
First man to get there. Rodgers in on the play as well. So again, the third quarter dominance continuing for the Rockets. Graham with time. Took the shorter route, but throws high, looking for Breskison. Pumped like he was looking for the double move deep ball. Yeah, but Toledo was all over it. Christian Dukes, the cornerback, was not fooled at all. He stayed with the deep route. And Graham's ball sailed. So now third and eight. They empty the backfield. Got Galladay at the top of your screen with an off corner. Now BB in motion. And Graham's going to keep it. Don't know about that call. Orion Jones breaking through. No gain. Again, the long by Hagen is 48 against Vegas. This would be a 52-yarder. So they're going to punt. Now, we heard of Coach Carey tell Quince the same playbook we had at the beginning of the game after he got his feet wet late in the second quarter. And now Coach Carey wants to take a timeout. First charge timeout, Northern Illinois. 32nd timeout. But that was certainly a safe call there on the quarterback design keeper. And celebrating its 11th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Since 2005, Allstate has contributed millions of dollars in scholarship funds. So you certainly don't want to burn a timeout in a punting situation. Now they're going to change their mind and line up for the 52-yarder. Quint, what did they tell us last night about well, his range? Well, Eamon, given the con uh, conditions tonight, it's relatively warm for this time of year right now. It's about 55 degrees. There's absolutely no wind. So for an early November Tuesday night, this is as good as it gets for a kicker. 52 yards. It would be a new career long. It's good. Christian Hagen delivers from 52 yards. And for Coach, Toledo fans, NIU just won't go away. Coach Kerry joked, yeah, he hit a 50 in practice, but there was no rush. There was no win. The no, wind was one, behind, yeah. no one was really paying attention. Yeah, he told us last night, absolutely not. 30-yard line is as far back as I'll go. He sends his kicker in the game, and he boots one straight through the uprights. So the timeout was worth it to change their mind and go for three. Coach Carey. Coach Carey said, yep, I, exactly how I drew it up. Great decision there by the coach. You know, we talked about ADs having their eyes on Coach Campbell. You take a look at the history of Northern Illinois and Jerry Kill and Dave Doran, and, you know, they have their eyes on Coach Carey as well. Both coaches, of course, downplaying that, saying it's not even on their minds. They're all about the kids they're coaching and the and the schedule ahead of them. Yeah, Rod, Rod Carey called it this week the silly season. The silly season. Where everyone starts talking about this job and that job. He's focused on his, on his Husky ball team here. Here's Wilshire. Knocked out of bounds at about the 34. Rocket fans looking for a flag for a late hit, but no laundry out on the turf. And Saturday on ESPN2, Big Ten games for you with eight no teams putting their perfect records on the line. At 3.30 Eastern, number nine, Iowa battles Indiana, presented by cars.com. Then seventh-ranked Michigan State takes on Nebraska and Lincoln at seven. That's presented by Hilton Hotels. Both games are also streaming live on Watch ESPN. And boy, Rocky, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we saw Nebraska beat Minnesota at Minnesota. Thought Nebraska was on track, and the wheels have come off the bus once again. Yeah, it looked like Mike Riley, that's, you know, Tommy Armstrong Jr. is starting to fit into that system, and then I know Cornhusker fans are a little bit upset of what's going on there. So now Swanson in the backfield. He gets it here from Ely. Out to the 31. Gain of three. William Lee, first man to get to him. 
And for somehow, Corey Jones is back in this football game. He's in the slot down to the bottom of your screen here. And he's usually the bubble screen, one-step guy, get in his hands and let him make some guys miss. Now here's the screen to Swanson. Brought down short of the first down after a five-yard pickup. Jamal Payton with the tackle. We talked about these running backs obviously doing well on the ground, now getting involved in the pass game. Now third and two. Ely to Jones. Out across the 45 for the first down. Marlon Moore with the coverage. Great read by Philip Ely. Marlon Moore, the safety, had about an eight-yard cushion on Corey Jones. Philip Ely took the snap, shot it out to him, first down. 11-yard pickup. Out to the Rocket 47. Ely off the play fake. Gets outside and keeps it himself. Paris Logan forces him out of bounds. Two yard pickup, second and eight. Again, mass substitutions at the wide receiver position. Jones comes out, Thompson comes out. Richards and Wiltshire. And Dante Johnson out there. There's Roberts in the slot here. They throw it to Johnson for a first down. Nice move inside the 30. Juked Paris Logan. The freshman out of Florida showing off some moves. Paris Logan's a great cover cornerback, but Toledo says, hey, let's see if this guy wants to tackle someone in the open field. Just a great move right there by Wiltshire. Sidestepping him and picking up some nice yardage. 21-yard gain. Back to Swanson. Driven back by Perez Ford. Ran into Peyton and then Ford did the rest. Perez Ford plays angry. Man, I love watching him play. As I said before, plays with an edge. Gives that defense a little bit of bite to him. Don't have to run a play. Up by five. But tempo's in their DNA now here for Toledo. And some pressure off the offense's left. Now they're saying, hold on, and let's go down to the other end. That's the end of the third quarter. So Matt quarter. Campbell backpedaling down to the other end. His team is 15 minutes of football away from staying undefeated and snapping a... Cavs at 8, Clippers Warriors at 10.30, tomorrow on ESPN. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Jimmy Johns. We take a look at the score by quarter with 15 minutes of regulation left. And Rocky, we've been talking about it all night. Toledo dominates most of the MAC. It's another story when they go up against Northern Illinois. Yeah, it certainly is. As we see, eight, only eight losses, and five of those losses have been at the hands of Northern Illinois. And this is where these games, the last five seasons, they have come down to it. Here in the fourth quarter, Toledo's just never been able to put away this NIU team. Let's see if they can do it here tonight. They give it to Hunt. Heads up field. It's inside the 25, down to the 22. And Cream Hunt finally looks like the running back we saw last year who was dominating and had 271 yards in that bowl game. Just finally looks healthy. Now, of course, as he limps around a little bit. 271 yards, five touchdowns against Arkansas State in the Go Daddy Bowl. They go right back to it. Able to bounce off the tackler for a positive gain, but Perez Ford again with the penetration. So fourth and short. Coach Campbell's already gone for it once. He's sending out Jamison Vest now as it's become a field goal kicking competition. Obviously, this will make it an eight point lead. Vest hit a 39 yarder. And that's what this is. And now Roberts coming out for one more blocker.
And Vest makes it. So again, it's an eight-point lead for the Rockets. Hagen delivered from 52. Vest answers from 39. It's still a one-possession ball game in Toledo. See you next week, Stan. This scion's going to bring out a whole other side of me. Hey, I love what you've done with my hair. I can't wait to set up camp. Good thing the Scion IN has plenty of space for our gear. It's getting chilly out. Mind if I put on some heat? I'm actually a bit warm, but we have dual zone climate control. Nice. Glad I sprung for the extras. Nope. All standard features that actually come standard. And no haggling with Scion's pure price. Feel like a new man. Weird, right? <laughs> Introducing the new IA and IM from Scion. Ready. Ready. Intel's best processor is here. So you can take this very real, very terrifying memory and edit it, share it, play it back in 4K quality. Introducing Intel's new sixth generation core processor. It's our best processor ever. It's on. Come on, get together. This guy from engineering says DirecTV is so advanced that you could put TVs anywhere without looking at cable wires and boxes in every room. How are they always one step ahead of us? Well, because their technology is far superior. Or because they have someone on the inside. Isn't that right, Gil? Sir, I would never. He's with us. wearing the wire. Take off you his shirt. Take off his shirt. Oh, oh. All right. Putting you in charge of the holiday party. Get rid of cable and upgrade to Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. When you make it, when you reach the top, join an exclusive country club. Acquire exotic automobiles. Fill a garage. Engage in investment banking. Be a venture capitalist. Then, when it's all said and done, head to a steakhouse. Your steakhouse. It's anything but traditional. A double portion of juicy marinated steak loaded with toppings and grilled to go. The new Boss Wraps, only at Taco Bell. Back here in Toledo, the field goal by Vest makes it an eight-point lead once again for the Rockets as Toledo tries to keep its perfect season alive. Earlier tonight, Toledo checked in at 24th. Eamon McEnany along with Rocky Boyman and Quint Kesnick in the glass bowl. A perfect night for football. Who would have guessed on a November night in Toledo? It would be this warm, but an absolute perfect night for football. And the Rocket fans on hand looking to see the Rockets snap a five-game losing streak to Northern Illinois. Turner back to receive. From the five. Quickly out to the 30, gets out to the 34. So again, they played it safe on third and long on the last time with Ryan Graham, the redshirt freshman quarterback. How much longer can you play at safe? Do you have to take a few chances in the passing game? Look, I think you, just, you can put the ball in the air, but where he's had his most success is just the, the, the throws over the middle, where he's not having to throw way out to the outside and make a tough throw. I think he continued to find a way to get Galladay and Breskison open over the middle. Huff in the backfield. They start with him. He gets brought down by Voss. And Cheatham Norrell's in on the play as well. But again, Drew Hare, the starter, injured late in the first half with a non-contact play. And then Ryan Graham there you see in the passing game. All those yards have been slant routes, drag routes over the middle. Now here looking to throw another slant. He hooks up with Galladay. So a first down into Toledo territory. The Rails with the coverage. And again, Galladay, most games this year, he's been the guy where they just run him down the sideline on a nine route. But that's a tough throw for a quarterback, especially for a redshirt freshman. So what do you do? You bring him on a slant route where it's just a much easier pitch and catch there for the quarterback. Now Huff gets outside, gets the first down. So the Huskies are moving. 
12 yard pickup for Huff, who came in averaging 7.6 yards per carry. Picked up a nice block by Galladay on that play downfield. That's what these wide receivers have to do. Without some of their weapons in there, this guy's got to do even more on the perimeter. Huff squeezes forward for a yard or two. Chase Murdoch in on the play. Josh Tichi as well. Haven't said the name Roland Milligan that much here tonight. They were very high on him. He's been a difference maker for the defense. Now two backs for Coach Carey. But it's Graham running it, tripped up from behind by Voss. So the senior out of East Grand Rapids, Michigan, making a big play. And we've seen this a few times here the last few series. Toledo's defense doing a lot of slanting, but this time it goes against them. They slant to the offense's right, and Orion Jones essentially just takes himself out of the play and creates a nice rush lane for Graham. Let's see if they let Graham throw it on third and six. Pressure up the middle, hits it to Galladay. First down, Northern Illinois, as he delivers a blow at the end of that to the freshman Tichi. 13-yard pickup. Again, that's what you do with a young quarterback. Give him the easy throw right over the middle. It's right out there in front of him. But just a nice job sorting through the reeds, but then finds his big play wide receiver and takes it from there. Now, Buono cannot get outside. Tripped up by Orion Jones. What a game Orion Jones has had tonight. He's been all over the place, creating penetration, making those running backs for NIU bounce instead of running behind their pads. Came in third in the MAC with nine and a half tackles for loss. Added to that total there. Eighth play of the drive for the Huskies. Pressure off the edge. Graham gets away. Brought down inside the 20 by Murdoch. Picks up four. And they bring the corner off the offense's left. But Graham smartly senses that and finds a little rush lane up the middle as Trent Boss got a little too far upfield. Now third and seven, you're in field goal range. Galladay. They can top your screen Galladay to, the right. to just drag across the middle again. Graham was looking for him, but he will be dropped. Jawan Woodley and Allen Covington. Covington got there first and flushed him out. So the Huskies will settle for another field goal, but there's a hurt rocket, and it's Woodley. And this is interesting. If Woodley's down, remember Jalen Coleman, their best linebacker, their leading tackler at the time, went down two weeks ago versus Eastern Michigan with a broken leg. Juwan Woodley moved to that Will linebacker spot. They love his athleticism, but now with that linebacking core, having a guy down already, how much depth do they have? Looks like Woodley may have just banged heads here with one of his own guys. A little friendly fire there. Hester, Trayvon Hester. Yeah. NIU will now attempt their fifth field goal. This is a 36-yarder. He's hit from 36, 20, 29, and 52. But there's a flag. Huskies. Signaling it's against Toledo. It's fourth and ten. Yes, personal foul. Leverage. Defense number 23. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. So they take the points off the board. And keep the drive alive and leverage called against DeJuan Rogers. Coach Campbell looking for an explanation. <laughs> Isn't happy with it. So what they're saying is DeJuan Rogers leveraged himself off another player. Tough to see I in there. I didn't see it in that play for sure. 
I mean, usually they call that when you, you push off the, the long snapper right. and, and elevate yourself. I, on that angle, I did not there's see that old, it. There's that old Patriot play that they got called for against the Jets when they threw a guy in to break up the wedge. Really didn't see anything there from that one angle. How critical is this? A fresh set of downs for NIU. And they start with two backs. Graham's going to keep it himself. Spins closer to the end zone. Cheatham Norrells with another tackle, but a four-yard gain by Graham. In this area of the field, Amos, is where Joel Buonio is so good. Just really has a knack inside that red zone for finding that little crease and making his way into the end zone. 14 touchdowns on the season, third most in FBS, behind only Leonard Fournette and Greg Ward Jr., the quarterback at Houston. Plenty of time on the play clock. Now Graham looking to throw, looking for Galladay. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. He beat Norrells and made the one-handed grab. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Graham's pass is lead to number 19 at Kenny Galladay. He's a seven yards touchdown reception. <laughs> Now, he makes the miraculous one-handed grab, but does he get a foot in bounds? Graham just puts it up for the tall receiver. Now you got to see possession. That right foot's down. Right foot's down. I did not see from that angle the ball popping around. Uh, you don't see the foot there. Yeah, he kind of double catches, but was the foot in bounds at that time? Again, Rick Jackson upstairs. Looking at these replays. Catch. And there's a foot, and then yep. it's hard to see there, but again, the ball, from the other angle, the ball did pop out, and he catches it a second time. Yep, we're going for two. So they decided. They got the thumbs up. Graham pitches it to Buonio. Wow. Norrells burns for the touchdown, comes up for the tackle. To keep Toledo in the lead. And Norrells gives up a touchdown to Galladay, but this time Norrells says, I will not be blocked by number 19. Aggressive play in the open field, shooting his gun, and making a crucial tackle on a two-point play. Toledo up by two. 9.27 left to play in regulation. Every insurance policy has a number. But not every insurance company understands the life behind it. For those who've served and the families who've supported them, we offer our best service in return. USAA, we know what it means to serve. Get an insurance quote and see why 92% of our members plan to stay for life. Oh look, it's the new Scion IM, and there's actor Jaleel White and Wax Museum Urkel. It's weird they're hanging out, but dual zone automatic climate control keeps one toasty and the other from melting. And the seven inch touchscreen display audio system drowns out that canned laughter. It's weird they'd want dual wishbone rear suspension, but the road to redefining oneself has many twists and turns. Did I do? The new Scion IM, standard features that actually come standard. Weird, right? It's the way we craft the Subway Chicken and Bacon Ranch Melt that sets it apart. Tender, all-white meat chicken, crispy bacon, Monterey cheddar, and cool, creamy ranch on freshly baked bread. It's irresistible goodness that leads to nothing but happiness. Only at Subway. Cheese it grooves are the best of both worlds, like a cheese it and a chip. Oh, you just put them together. Yes. Closer. Closer. They're kissing. <laughs> we take time for our cheese to mature in our crispy cheese it grooves. You see that? That's the Bernie. A real wood portable self-contained fire you can carry around in your backpack. With Bernie, it only takes one match to start grilling your favorite foods over real wood with no chemicals. That's a fire you can sing around. That's a fire you can cook a gourmet meal around. Skewer up hot dogs, kebabs, or a burger, and when the party's over, Bernie just burns away naturally. You can even put on a metal-plated Viking helmet and a beard so ridiculous and matted that you can find last night's mutton in it. Order your Bernie at BernieGrill.com. ESPN College Football is presented by Jimmy John's Freaky Fast Sandwiches. Welcome back to the Glass Bowl. A whole lot on the line.
line tonight for Toledo in Northern Illinois. Toledo with an undefeated season in the top 25 of the first poll of the college football playoff rankings. The standings, excuse me, 24, but more importantly, they're looking to snap a losing streak against Northern Illinois. The Huskies have won five straight over Toledo. The Huskies have won five straight Mac West championships going to Detroit. And the Rockets want to put an end to that here tonight. This is Johnson. Gets out to the 30. Brought down by Brandon Mays. The Mac does not disappoint, and if you like this, we're going to come right back at it with more tomorrow night from Bowling Green, nearby Bowling Green. Frank Solch's club on the road. That's tomorrow night at 8 on ESPN2. And tonight we have the top two teams in the West. Tomorrow night, the top two teams in the East. Bowling Green running that Falcon fast offense, 90 to 100 plays a game. Dino Babers got him going down there. Hunt in the backfield. He gets it on first down. Gets out across the 35. Brought down by Boomer Mays. Now you're a tempo team, but you want to milk clock. Does that impact your tempo at all? The only thing about that, though, is that we've been going tempo so much that does that get you out of rhythm? Obviously, the, the smarter thing to do is let clock bleed here. But that's what Jason Cannell, the offensive coordinator, has got to figure out. By doing that, does that take us out of that rhythm that's worked so well here tonight? Well, now they got to figure out how to come up with a few more yards on third and short. Third and one as we approach eight and a half minutes left in the ball game. Here's Hunt to the left. Gets the first down, gets out near the 45. Shawan Lurie with the tackle. He's been quiet tonight. He had a great pass breakup on the first drive. And Hunt, that's his 24th carry of this game. We talked about he's dealt with a hamstring a lot this year. He was suspended the first couple games. But I think tonight he's back in the form we're used to seeing. That's how many carries he had against Iowa State for a season high. Also has a season high now, 141 yards. Down the sideline to Russell. And he makes the grab. And they call it incomplete. Yeah, I think that ball popped out the last second, Eamon. Paris Logan with the coverage. No game, Talia wants to take the shot with the six foot four Alonzo Russell over the five foot nine Paris Logan. It looks like Russell brings the ball down, but as he's coming to the turf, no, Logan actually pops it out. Great play by Logan as he's falling to the ground to reach that right hand down and not let Russell make the catch. Now Jones in motion. Pressure up the middle, looking for Roberts, the tight end. Sean Folliard with the coverage. Rocket fans looking for a flag. Flag or not, Philip Ely put that ball on the money. It would have been a nice grab for Roberts. It was just a little bit behind the big, the big tight end. The Huskies have been ready for that matchup. No matter where they put, have put number 80, he has not been a factor. Now, tight, third and ten. Tight man coverage again by NIU. Pressure coming up the middle. Complete to Jones. Shy of the first down for now. He gets the first down. Tremendous moves after the catch. The veteran Logan had him sized up for a tackle, but Jones escaped. And we talked about it, Eamon. Corey Jones is so good in space. Get him the football and let him make some guys miss. And he makes a very good cornerback in Paris Logan. Ball to the ground, picks up the first. It's miraculous that Corey Jones is still in this game after he took the big hit on the punt return earlier. First and 10 now from the Husky 42. Back to Hunt. 
Liddell Fleming came all the way over from the left to make that tackle for a loss of one. Play clock down to 15. Pressure from Ford. And that's out of bounds. Looking for Dante Johnson. And you know, we, you talked about it earlier. Make him move his feet. They've only gotten to him twice, but they are getting they are getting closer to him and making a force throw. Well, you're right, look, and you don't have to bring him to the ground. Yes, you'd love to sack him, but just enough to affect him. Don't let him set his feet and deliver a nice, accurate throw. They talk about we've got to get Philip Ely off his spot, and they've done a decent job of that tonight. So now third and 11. Jones in the slot to the left. Now they empty the backfield. Opens up the middle of the field. Ely, low throw complete. Roberts. This time he goes down and makes the grab. That's a great play call. They motion the, the running back out of the backfield. That takes the defender out of that middle of the field. And it was a nice bit of room there for Philip Ely to find his wide receiver. 11-yard pickup as he beat Brandon Mays in coverage. Now Swanson in the backfield, four wide receivers. Under six and a half to play. Swanson running behind Roberts. Brought down. Number two, by Corey Swanson Thomas and Marlon Moore. Number two, Marlon Moore. So now second and long, empty backfield, five wide receivers. Now Swanson moves over to Ely's right. 11th play of the drive. Play fake. Dropped. Low throw, but you expect Alonzo Russell to make that catch. And, and you know what, Eamon? Alonzo Russell is a great athlete, and he's made a lot of catches around here, but he's also had some, some critical drops throughout his career here, especially this season. That's a ball. That, I mean, great job of orchestrating that offense. They move the defender into the box. It creates some open room there for Russell to catch it. He's got to come up with those. Huge third and nine here. It'd be a very long field goal for Jamison Vest, 47 yarder, if you can't gain anything. Huskies back off. Ely with time. Now they get to him. Steps up into the end zone, almost picked off. Brandon Mays had his fingers on it. A very dangerous throw. Now does Coach Campbell play field position or does he look for three more points? He's sending out Vest. His long this year was 44 yards against Arkansas State. Coming in three of four from 40 to 49 yards. And this is right on the range Coach Campbell told. He said the 30 yard lines were about the most I feel comfortable with Vest. He's already kicked two 39-yarders. No good. Off to the right. Rod Carey knows his team is very much alive. And his field goal kicker is back in play, down by only two with 5.19 left to play. Bears, Chargers at 8.10 Eastern, Monday on ESPN. Arby's and A1 have always been close to each other in the phone book. But now, Arby's and A1 are as close as two friends could be, snuggling together on a sandwich. Arby's, we have the meat. Oh, look, it's the new Scion IM. And there's actor Jaleel White and Wax Museum Urkel. 
It's weird they're hanging out, but dual zone automatic climate control keeps one toasty and the other from melting. And the seven inch touchscreen display audio system drowns out that canned laughter. It's weird they'd want dual wishbone rear suspension, but the road to redefining oneself has many twists and turns. Did I do? The new Scion IM, standard features that actually come standard. Weird, right? Some people say a good steak doesn't need sauce. Whoops. Arby's just put some exclusive A1 sauce on good steak. I hope those people don't get angry. Arby's, we have the meat. You know, Viagra helps guys with erectile dysfunction get and keep an erection. Talk to your doctor about Viagra. Ask your doctor if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Viagra if you take nitrates for chest pain. It may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Side effects include headache, flushing, upset stomach, and abnormal vision. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. Stop taking Viagra and call your doctor right away if you experience a sudden decrease or loss in vision or hearing. Ask your doctor about Viagra. When you booked this trip, you didn't know we had over 11,000 local activities listed on our app or that you could book them right from your phone. A few weeks ago, you still didn't know if you were gonna go. Now the only thing you don't know is why it took you so long to come here. Expedia, technology that connects you to the people and places that matter. This week, College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, heads back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama for the huge matchup between 7-0 LSU and the 7-1 Crimson Tide. Reese, Kirk, Dez, Lee Corso, and the rest of the crew prep you for another full day of football like only they can do. It all starts Saturday at 9 Eastern on ESPN, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. And you don't have to wait until January for the playoffs. You got a playoff game, LSU, Alabama. Alabama already with one loss. Now Graham cannot get outside, tripped up by Connery Swift. No gain. And look, if I'm Toledo, I'm stacking that box, taking away Joel Buonio, and I'm making the redshirt freshman quarterback who's making his first appearance of the season, I'm making him beat me tonight. Filling in for Drew Hare, who got suffered a non-contact injury late in the first half. Tommy Lee Lewis also out after having a huge first half. They swing it out to Turner. Swift comes up, but he gets away from the tackle. Trent Voss running him down after a three-yard pickup. All right, so now the redshirt freshman. Third and long on the road against an undefeated team that's ranked 24th in the college football playoff. What does Rod Carey ask him to do? Well, look, if I'm Toledo, I am finding where number 19 is, Kenny. Kenny Galladay. Right now, he's heading to the top of your screen to the right, where Norrells is waiting for him. Well, that's what they want. They got their best cover guy on Galladay. Approaching the four-minute mark. Flag on the play. Turner makes the grab and gets the first down, but let's see what the call is. And it's going against Northern Illinois. Five men in the backfield. Five yard penalty, third down. I think they're saying Turner was off the ball and he should have been on. So instead of a first down, it's third and 12. And the Rocket fans get a little bit louder. Again, Galladay at the top of your screen. They cannot allow him to get inside for that easy throw over the middle or that slant route. From Norrell's, I take away the inside, force him to throw the ball to the outside part of the field. Four on the play clock. Graham forced out of the pocket. Finds Galladay right at the marker. Norrell's complaining that he was pushed off. It certainly looked like he was. 13-yard pickup. And what they do is they create the easier throw 
for Graham by rolling him outside, getting him a clear view, and here's the replay. Boy, that left arm certainly shoved Norrell to the ground. Now from the 41, Graham steps up. Down the seam, Galladay makes the catch! Swift brings him down, but he beat Rodgers. The Huskies won't go away. And how much confidence do they have in Ryan Graham here on this play? A 44-yard shot right down the seam to the tall receiver, Kenny Galladay. So now Toledo with two timeouts left. You got to start thinking about taking them. I mean, obviously, you got to make the stops first because Northern Illinois is going to play for a touchdown, I would think. With so much time left, but if they change their mind, you're going to have to start taking some timeouts left. Buonio. Still on his feet all the way down to the two. Without their starting quarterback, without one of their biggest playmaking threats, they're knocking on the door to take the lead on the road against Toledo. And they go quickly. Buonio stopped. So now how do you play this if you're Coach Carey? As you approach two minutes left, second and goal. Your kicker's already delivered from 52. Second charge timeout, Toledo. So now Toledo's down to one timeout left. The Huskies have won five straight over Toledo. They're knocking on the door to make it six when we return. Oh, look, it's the new Scion IM, and there's actor Jaleel White and Wax Museum Urkel. It's weird they're hanging out, but dual zone automatic climate control keeps one toasty and the other from melting. And the seven inch touchscreen display audio system drowns out that canned laughter. It's weird they'd want dual wishbone rear suspension, but the road to redefining oneself has many twists and turns. Did I do? The new Scion IM, standard features that actually come standard. Weird, right? Excellent. Looking below the surface, researching a hunch, and making a decision. You are type E. Time for a change of menu. Research and invest from any website with E-Trade's browser trading. E-Trade. Opportunity is everywhere. Happy, happy, happy for you and me. Happy, happy, happy. Uh -oh. Aww. Oh, thank you. Intel's best processor is here, which gives new PCs three times the battery life, so you never have to stop watching. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Happy, happy, happy for you, you and me. me. Happy, 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 happy for all to see. La, 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 one more time. <laughs> Introducing Intel's new sixth generation core processor with three times the battery life. It's our best processor ever. Pairing thick cut onion rings with Angus steak. You've heard of that. But topping that tender steak and crispy onion ring with A1 special reserve sauce? You've never heard of that. Because that's never been done. Not until Arby's and A1 buddied up to make a sandwich like the world has never seen. Is anyone else freaking out about this? Arby's, we have the meat. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Jimmy John's. We expected a white knuckler, and that's exactly what we're getting. And Rocky, if you're Coach Campbell now, what's your thought process here with only one timeout left facing a second and goal? Well, look, I think you've got to keep them out of the end zone here and force them. You get a stop here, you call a timeout, your last one you have left. But then there's certainly the argument, look, if you let them score here, right, you have enough time, you have 145 left and one timeout. Maybe that's the direction Matt Campbell goes. So Buonio in the backfield. Breskison, bottom of your screen to the left, two tight ends. Buonio. 
Touchdown, Huskies. So, 159 left to go. It's a two yard run by Buonio, who now has 15 on the season. And they're going to go for one. Yeah, would you not go for two here? Two would force them to make the extra point if they're able to score a touchdown. So it's 32-27. So whether Toledo let them score or not, we don't know, but Juanjo punches it in as what a drive by the young quarterback, Ryan Graham. You talk about earning your stripes. 70 yards in eight plays, the two big pass plays to Galladay. And here is it, here it is, Toledo coming in with that ranking in the playoff on the line. The perfect season on the line and first place in the Mac West on the line. And we've talked and a five game losing streak to Northern Illinois. Yeah, how many times has, has Toledo been in this situation versus Northern Illinois? They control most of the game. Then the fourth quarter comes around the last five seasons. Amy, Northern Illinois has always found a way to close the game out. And here they are with potentially the same scenario. So Ryan Graham, 9 for 12, 132 yards, and the touchdown. Johnson from the one. Out to about the 22. And a reminder, Saturday on ABC, we've been talking about the new college football playoff rankings all night long. Clemson, the number one team, takes on Florida State at 3.30 Eastern. The Seminoles coming in at 16th. That's presented by K Jewelers. Then at 8, it's Ohio State, the number three team in the college football playoff rankings, hosting Minnesota at the Shoe, presented by Walmart. Both games will also be streaming live on Watch ESPN. But the Rocket fans came to celebrate the first win over Northern Illinois in a while, but the Huskies have flipped the script here in the second half. Ely, here comes pressure, he gets rid of it, high throw, it's intercepted! Boomer Mays does it to Toledo again! Ford applied the pressure. Mays came up with the pick. And they tried to go to Kareem Hunt with a little dump down over the middle. He just wasn't able to secure the catch. And Boomer Mays, who hasn't been much of a factor in this game, comes up with a critical play here late. Coming in, he had 17 tackles and an interception in three career games against Toledo, and he just shut the door on the Rockets. But you could not say enough about this Northern Illinois team seeing their starting quarterback go down the night Tommy Lee Lewis was having end an injury, and somehow, some way, they're going to find a way on the road to make it six straight over Toledo. Now, Buonio. And you just get the sense that, that Toledo in this situation, that they, they have that, you know, the, the, the history to fall back on, right? Hey, we've been here before. We found a way to win this game versus Toledo. Toledo doesn't have that. And again, they let another one slip away. They also never landed that knockout punch. Yeah. They let the Huskies hang around. Well, especially when their best two offensive players go down. That's a great opportunity, as you said, to bury them and put this game out of reach. You, you let a team like Northern Illinois that runs the ball so well, plays such great defense, you let them hang around, and this is the result you get. Coach Carey told us last night he knew right away when he saw Kenny Galladay that he was a difference maker and they needed him. And boy, did that play out on that drive. Yeah, it sure did, as you, as you said. Third and final, first timeout, Toledo. We asked Rod Carey. Yeah, hey, when did you know Kenny Galladay was going to be a special player? He said, well, basically the first day he showed up on campus, and we saw it here tonight. Started his career at North Dakota, grew five inches as a freshman at North Dakota, wanted to come closer to home, Chicago native. Coach Carey took a look, got some recommendations. 
and it was certainly a different role for Kenny Galladay tonight. Most of the, this year, he's been just the go route down the sideline and so good at, at that role. But today, they put him more in the slot, gave him that matchup, let him cross the field when Toledo was in man-to-man -man coverage. And you got to give a lot of credit to Ryan Graham, the, Graham, the redshirt freshman quarterback. Again, tomorrow night, we stay in Ohio and we stay in the MAC. Ohio against Bowling Green. Dave Lamont, Desmond Howard, and Quint will have the call on that ball game. But things have changed all of a sudden in the MAC and flag on the play. And Coach Campbell knew it. He said, "Look, you take a look at this stretch we have in November. That's as tough as any team in the country is going to have to deal with." He knew his wins over Arkansas and Iowa State. Offense number 71. 10 yard penalty, third down. We weren't going to give him any bonus points in the MAC. Yeah, but he knew that it all came down to this game right here, as it has so many years in the past. And you know, I, I certainly thought they brought their best team into this matchup we, as we've seen in the last five years. Defense played great at times, but you're right. They just could not deliver that knockout blow to put this game away. Let NIU hang around and an experienced, good, well-coached ball club like this is going to find a way to get it done. They will try to bounce back next week at Central Michigan. And here, Kenny Galladay and the Huskies will go to Buffalo next Wednesday night. But what a gut check and gut test passed by the Huskies. And Ryan Graham, he's going to remember this night for the rest of his life. And he was forced into duty, and he led the Huskies to a come-from-behind victory on the road against an undefeated Toledo team. When you mentioned how much confidence does this NIU team get when they can go into the house of an undefeated 24-ranked team in the, in the nation without your two best offensive weapons most of the game and come out with a victory. Boy, Rod Carey, as we see him jog across the field here, certainly got to be proud of his ball club. And it's over. The Huskies of Northern Illinois make it six straight over the Rockets. Toledo's undefeated season comes to an end. 32-27 is the final. Let's check in with Quint down on the field. Coach, congratulations. Take me inside the locker room at halftime. You're dealing with the loss of your starting quarterback and one of your top wide receivers. What was the mindset? Next guy up. Um, you know, listen, these guys have a belief that goes uh, way beyond one guy or one or a couple players. And uh, yeah, Drew said next guy up. Tommy said next guy up. Next guy came up. We've seen that belief in this series for six straight years now. Where does that come from? Uh, you know, listen, it's from doing the little things, the details. We got a lot of respect for Toledo. Matt does a great job. The program does a good job, but we do too. Um, we do a great job. and. We just focus on the details. That's the difference in games like this. You turn to your backup, Ryan Graham. How would you best describe what he was able to do in the last uh, last half? Well, listen, at, at the end of the first half, we kind of pulled the reins on him, wanted him to get hit a little bit, kind of get the blood flowing. And then after that, we said, it's time to go. And he, I thought he did a great job. That big third down, then that big, you know, throw down there to Kenny. I, you know, the kid just did it. Congratulations, Coach. Thanks. Thanks again. Thanks. Amen. Coach Carey and his Huskies take one step closer to Detroit, but it's still a long road ahead in the map. It certainly is. Toledo with a big time setback, but Northern Illinois once again taking control of that map west. Our final score from the glass bowl, the Huskies 32, the Rockets 27. For Rocky Boyman and Quint Kessenick and our entire crew, I'm Amy McEnany saying so long from Toledo. Now let's send you to Michelle, Max, Marcellus, and the gang at Sports Nation. is presented by Toyota. Yes, welcome to Sports Nation. I'm Michelle Vito. That, of course, is Max Kellerman and Marcel Swiley. Are we having a good Tuesday, boys? We're having a great Tuesday. Lovely blouse, I oh, must say. Oh, thank you. Lovely blouse on you as well. Oh, thank you, darling. By the way, you have a computer out. Does that mean today's a serious show? Yeah, yeah what's going, going on in? with this? Hey, wow. look, when we're going to talk football, it's time to break it down. X's and O's, and i got to have my I brain. just rely on my years in the league. I know, you're good at that. <laughs> Fantasy really football good league. Well, we are going to talk football on today's show. Colin Kaepernick, if you haven't heard, has been benched on his birthday. Steph Curry hey, can't be stopped, and Greg Popovich hey. calls someone very close to him a coward.
But first. On oh, your birthday? No, I know. It's not good. Oh, worse than losing Neither your lucky. job on your day off. Fired on your day off. Uh, last night, Andrew Luck was not very good. He threw three interceptions. Now, he did manage to bring his team back in the fourth, but eventually cost them with one final turnover. Mm -hmm. John Gruden, I don't know if you guys were listening, but he was crazy calling for an investigation on where he's gone. <laughs> is Andrew Luck? Is he hurt? Marcellus, did people like Max... Crown Andrew Luck way too early. Absolutely. Guys like Max, and I was telling him, arguing with him in a moment, calm down on Andrew Luck. I used to watch this guy in college, and I saw some great skills. I saw flashes of brilliance, but also I saw a guy that was being measured even in college. Two tight ends set fullback. He would do the handoff play action. Not deep balls, but intermediate balls. Translate that guy to the first overall selection. All of a sudden, I start hearing crazy things like, this is the next John Elway. Yep. And I said, okay, interesting. Prove it to me, because I'm a different Bronco fan, and John Elway was my favorite quarterback ever. Let's see this guy go out and be John Elway. And then I started to see the most damning statistic that there is in the game of football turnovers every coach says this i don't even need to see the game i don't even need to see the film if you tell me the turnover ratio i'll tell you who wins 90 percent of those ball games